the DualSense makes the most of the opportunities that a new console generation provides. The successor to the DualShock 4 has a stark new look and a redesigned shape that's easier on the hands, which makes it a fundamentally better, more interesting controller. It also has some next-gen swagger. Beautifully implemented next-gen haptics and adaptive trigger resistance create opportunities for more immersive experiences through tactile feedback. Both a careful evolution and a big innovative leap forward, the DualSense sets a strong new standard for console controllers. Though the overall shape has changed just slightly, it has longer, beefier handles which rest and fit in your hands better because they're simply more controller to grip. Weighing 282 grams, it's considerably heavier than the DualShock 4's 215 grams. That weight is well balanced though and ultimately leads to a more comfortable feeling as you hold it. Aesthetically, the DualSense feels like a dramatic shift from the DualShock 4. Its smooth curves and two-tone color scheme feel like a paradigm shift after three generations of discrete, single-color Sony gamepads. And there's an incredible attention to detail, from the way the side panels flare up just a little bit on either side of the touchpad, to the textured grip on the back panel, which is actually made using tiny, almost indistinguishable versions of the PlayStation face button shapes. The layout of the DualSense comes over intact, more or less, from the DualShock 4, but there are some interesting new changes to some of the buttons, as well as new features that enhance gameplay in exciting ways. The buttons and D-pad push back faster than their predecessors and have a little bit more travel, both of which make them feel less squishy and provide a better sense of feedback. While I wouldn't call them clicky, there is a clear sound and feeling when you fully press the face buttons or the D-pad. In the center column, the Share button has been replaced with a Create button which pulls up a system-level menu that lets you choose between taking screenshots, recording a clip of what just happened, or starting a new recording. The DualShock 4 touchpad returns, but it's now matte white with an RGB light bar around the rim. Below that, the speaker returns alongside a logo-shaped PS button. Below the PS button, you have the new built-in microphone. The mic looks like a tiny dot on the outside, but it's capable of picking up anything and everything directly around it. In at least one game, it also technically adds extra control options. In Astro's Playroom, you're asked to blow into the mic to advance at certain points. But if you find the idea of having a hot mic in your hands unnerving, there is a thin, clear mic mute button just below the PS logo. If you swing around back, the biggest, most exciting changes deal with the triggers. L2 and R2 are longer, with a deeper pull, which I imagine help maximize the impact of DualSense's two most substantial new features, precision haptic feedback and the so-called adaptive triggers, which create resistance in them to simulate tension or otherwise provide physical feedback. Though the haptics are present throughout the controller, the most interesting precise feedback comes through the triggers. The two features, working in tandem, make the triggers the centerpiece of the DualSense. They aren't just critical inputs, but the primary conduits through which you feel what a game is trying to tell you. Also on the back, the DualShock 4's light bar has been removed, and the micro USB charging port has been replaced with a USB-C port. Battery life is still a low point on the DualSense. In my personal testing, I found the controller lasts around 10 to 13 hours, which is long enough that you don't need to charge it every day, but short enough that you'll frequently find yourself running low on power. Finally, at the bottom of the gamepad, you have a 3.5mm audio jack for a wired headset and copper pickups which allow it to connect to Sony's charging cradle. The leap from the DualShock 4 to DualSense truly feels like a next-gen experience. In playing some of the PS5's launch lineup, including Astro's Playroom, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and Bug Snacks, the refined design and new features of the DualSense do wonders for PlayStation gaming. Independent of the new features, the DualSense is Sony's best controller to date. Its larger chassis and longer handles fit better in your hands, making it easier to hold for long stretches. Its buttons are more responsive and have a more satisfying press. And the grip, while only very slight, is enough to hold your hands in place even when they get sweaty. Even if it couldn't do anything new, it would still be a huge upgrade. But of course, the DualSense does do a lot of new, very impressive things. Astro's Playroom, which serves as a showcase for the DualSense's new and old features, shows all kinds of ways in which the haptics and adaptive triggers can be used to make games more immersive and provide a natural sense of feedback. When Astro draws a bow and arrow or gets ready to slingshot himself into a catapult, you can really feel the tension grow in the triggers as you hold it down, allowing you to naturally gauge how charged the launch will be. In another moment, a large creature walks towards Astro, and you can feel what direction it's coming from and how close it gets based on how the controller vibrates. To me, the most impressive use of the haptic feedback was purely immersive. Purely immersive. 
In the opening cutscene for Spider-Man Miles Morales, Miles rides the subway and you can feel the train shifting and tilting on your fingers. The rumbling sensation in the controller diminishes and intensifies as the train turns or shakes because of the train's speed. In theory, the DualSense's microphone is a great equalizer, as it means that every PS5 player using a DualSense always has access to a microphone. In practice, the built-in mic works fine in a pinch, but it isn't a replacement for a good headset. The mic can clearly pick up your voice without having to move the controller too close to your face, but it'll also pick up any noise in your immediate vicinity, like a phone ringing or the sound of a mechanical keyboard typing notes. The bigger problem, I found, was that the incoming chat audio from other players comes in through the DualSense's internal speaker when you're using the controller mic. While the microphone could hear me easily, I found it difficult to hear my teammates over the game audio coming through the TV. Playing on the PS4 version of Apex Legends on my PS5, my partners and I had to rely primarily on nonverbal communication because I couldn't always hear them over the sounds of a firefight. With the DualSense, Sony has both made a more comfortable gamepad for traditional gameplay and introduced some very exciting new features. The haptics and adaptive triggers make an immediately noticeable difference in games that make use of them, and they offer the exciting potential for new and interesting gameplay experiences. Except for battery life, which remains a weak point, the DualSense controller is everything that you want to see in a next-gen upgrade. For more PlayStation coverage, be sure to check out our reviews of the PS5 and the Pulse 3D headset. And for everything else, keep it locked to IGN. Spider-Man Miles Morales isn't just a port of the PS4 version. It's a testament to what the future of gaming can be on the PlayStation 5. Pushing Insomniac's proprietary engine with ray tracing at almost every turn, a nearly locked frame rate across both modes, impressively detailed surface maps and textures, and in fidelity mode, it's all at native 4K. Everything in Spider-Man Miles Morales shows that Insomniac hasn't been resting on their laurels and have instead been pushing their engine's technology to the next level, putting the PS5 to the test. One it passes with ease. This is my technical analysis of Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's been impressive seeing what the first games can do on these new consoles, and one of the newer pieces of technology that's getting a lot of buzz, and rightfully so, is ray tracing. And in Spider-Man Miles Morales, it is everywhere. It's on buildings, in puddles, on cars, and it's even turned on when you enter photo mode on the PS5. This is crazy tech. There is no escaping it on this next-gen console, and it's truly stunning. It does so much to make New York appear that much more breathtaking. The technology they used in the past was largely screen space reflections, and it works well for the PS4 Pro, standard PS4, and even the performance mode. But when you start looking at the PS5 fidelity mode side by side with even the PS5's performance mode, you get an idea of what you're missing out on with it turned off. It does a tremendous job of making each scene pop. As a person who's always preferred a higher frame rate, this is one game where you might find yourself truly torn. I placed the fidelity mode side by side with the 60 FPS performance mode here and slowed it all down to 20% speed to show the difference. There's a true fluidity that you simply lose out on when zipping across New York City on fidelity mode. Selfishly, I want it all, but at the end of the day, this isn't a game where you need the frame rate to enjoy it. You should definitely give it a try for web slinging, but it drops the visuals like ray tracing while still keeping much of the impressive lighting improvements only available on the PlayStation 5. From my measurements, performance mode is doing a great job keeping close to native 4K with dimensions around 1728p, and I found a few higher so you're not losing much resolution for the frame rate. But ray tracing, when you're on the ground or in an internal area, it just pops right out and wows you. Here's what Insomniac's core technology director Mike Fitzgerald had to say about their 60fps performance mode and the choice it gives players. So we have a temporal solution that we've used for a number of years. And yeah, it's a frame-to-frame -frame temporal method and we use lots of information about where things are on the screen, how fast they're moving. And that lets us upscale very nicely to 4K. 
We have a really good method of blending between the resolutions when they flip, so you don't notice it. What that lets us do is really prioritize the frame rate over the resolution. I think the performance mode can go up to just, just under a full 4K, and then yes, yeah, down into the 1700s. We've heard so much of, oh, it's a really hard decision, but I think that's probably a good thing because it means we're giving different options for different you know, types of players you hear. Some people are like, I'm definitely doing the rage racing thing and others are saying no, I'm definitely doing the 60 frames per second thing. And so it's nice. SSR or screen space reflections are still used on all the other platforms and it's implemented quite well. One place all modes use that is on the water and you'd have to be looking really close to see the reflections disappear in the distance as you're zipping past at 70 miles an hour. And on windows, the cube maps as you climb up are slightly more noticeable as on occasion, they won't reflect something like the giant Avengers building behind me. But again, you don't notice any of this unless you're making an analysis video like I am. So the SSR does a ton to make up for what you're missing out on at higher frame rates or on older consoles. Speaking of frame rates, that same 33 millisecond and double frame issue crops up again and it's present on all versions of Spider-Man, even the PS5 version at native 4K and on performance mode. Here's what Insomniac had to say about this frame rate issue. One thing we do is we're really careful about camera cuts. We want to make sure you don't see cloth pops and things settling and things popping in afterwards or any of the simulation type stuff that you usually do frame to frame. We don't want to do the camera cut and then have things be in a bad state, right? So a lot of what we do is pre-camera cut, simulate all the cloth in the scene for an extra frame or two, you know, let some lighting settle and try and do it all behind the scenes before we show another one. And I bet there's some some cuts in there where there's, you know, we've ramped up a lot of the amount of cloth we're using in the game and stuff like that. And I bet I'm almost certain that's what is happening. And while you see these flutters in my analysis, it's literally one frame between camera cuts and it's nearly imperceptible during gameplay on all platforms. The thing that surprised me even more is that from the base PS4 up through the PS5, they've achieved an almost locked 30 frames per second when you're web slinging in the open world. And if you choose to play at 60 FPS on the PS5, it's going to be locked at 60 and it's going to stay there. But if one platform struggled to stay there, it was the base PS4. The color range seems to be quite reduced. And while web slinging through the open world, you only saw minor drops that you don't notice as you play, but they're there. So I'm calling them out. Regardless, no matter what platform you would play on, it seems that Insomniac has pushed every pixel they can to give you the best experience your hardware can offer, and that deserves kudos. If you're playing on the PS5, native 4K at 30 frames per second is simply stunning. Here's what Insomniac had to say about developing for the PS4 versus the PlayStation 5. Yeah, so part of our work on this game was building in a robust sort of scaling system to have stuff run on all the different types of hardware. We have a lot of PS4 players on the base PS4 on the PS4 Pro, and we really wanted this game to be an awesome example of, you know, tech on that hardware as well, and not only look at the PS5. The PS5 let us do more dynamic lights, obviously the ray tracing stuff that it's been focused on, but really just more nuanced dynamic lighting in general. And our lighting artists spent a lot of time in there saying, okay, we can turn these ones on for the Pro, and these ones on for the 5, and okay, we need to compensate with this on, on the floor if we don't have it in. And then HDR comes up, you know, so there's all these different combinations of things and we have some tools to help them manage that. Diving into some other technical aspects of Spider-Man, we can take a look at the character models on the PS5, which promise to have improved skin shading and spline-based hair, so it moves more naturally. Actually, the fur coat that Miles has on the subway in the opening is a really good example of this. That actually uses all the strand hair. And as you watch him walk around, see all the, the strands simulated. The city also has several improvements, including more characters on screen at any given time and a longer draw distance. I was able to catch their LOD system in action at a few points, like on this long city street. Their system is quite genius, actually, as they revealed what's going on on the PS4 version. The further away you get from the camera, the lower the level of detail gets for everything. If you happen to be walking along the ground and you squint, you'll notice it like with these buildings in the distance that transform to a higher level of detail as you get closer. In addition, another genius tactic is how they delay loading the higher resolution items and things that aren't needed as you swing through the city. It's all delayed in the pipeline as you're swinging, but when you land, it all starts loading in as outlined during their GDC talk. But as a normal player, you don't notice any of this happening, and that's by design. It's kind of the magic of what Insomniac does. The added motion blur, chromatic aberration, and film grain 
all works together to make the game look more like a film. And now they've continued adding to all that with ray tracing, improved character models, and new technology on the PS5 that allows them to expand what they can render in any given scene. And the loading times are next to nothing when compared with older platforms. So while that means more textures, more people, more cars, more tech, and higher levels of detail in each scene. I will say this though, no matter what platform you play on, even the base PS4, the game runs quite well, but the PS5 fidelity option should not be missed, especially if you want to see everything an engine like this can do for an open world game. The frame rate option is also impressive. Insomniac nailed everything here. Spider-Man Miles Morales sets an impressive standard for open world games on the PlayStation 5 and all the other platforms. This is my second performance analysis piece for IGN, and I hope you liked it. I've been working to make better comparisons for IGN, so if you like this one, consider checking out my look at Gears 5 and the technology they've implemented to make it run at 4K 60 frames per second with the Xbox Series X. These take a ton of time and research for me to do, so with all honesty, just thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my next performance analysis across both next-gen platforms, where we'll focus on a certain Megaton shooter I'm sure you all love. After a generation of figuratively towering above its rivals with the monstrously successful PlayStation 4, one thing is certain, Sony's new generation contender will also loom large over its peers. Literally, this thing is massive. However, what the PlayStation 5 lacked last SSD, but mostly to its truly remarkable new controller, the DualSense. While a good deal of what folks are going to be able to squeeze out of 2020's salvo of shiny new hardware may be bottlenecked to some degree by the screen that they own, the PS5's unique DualSense democratizes a next-gen gaming experience for all, delivering an amazing new level of haptic feedback that really needs to be felt to be believed. Make no mistake, the austere and unceremonious nature of the box and packaging is in stark contrast to the PlayStation 5 itself, which is far and away the most flamboyant looking console I've ever owned. Rather than a single shell, the PS5 appears to be made up of four separate pieces, a glossy black case sandwiched between a pair of warped matte white plastic plates with a detachable stand. I'll happily concede the PS5 does look a bit better in the flesh than it did in the initial product shots. The matte off-white finish to the plates is actually a lot nicer than I feared it would be, and the sloping vents flanking the strip of glossy black plastic that wraps around the edge of the unit are eye-catching. The problem to my eye is that the gradually widening black strip on the front and the flappy overhanging plastic corners makes the PS5 look a little bit like a piece of luggage that's stuffed too full to zip up properly. And the irregular curves remind me more of a cassette that spent a hot summer's day on a car dashboard than a PlayStation. It's obviously not the first white games console, but in concert with its sheer size and shape, it's surprisingly ostentatious for something designed to sit beneath or beside black televisions, black soundbars, black subwoofers, and a generation of black AV equipment and gaming hardware. It's a bit showy, and in a world of generally sleek and simple tech, it looks a bit out of place, like 2006's vision of 2046. On the front, you'll find access to the Ultra HD Blu-ray optical drive, a high-speed USB Type-A port, and a super-speed USB Type-C port, as well as the power button and eject button. These buttons are adjacent to each other, but the eject button is noticeably smaller, so if you're anything like me, there's now hope of not spending an entire generation trying to remember which button is which. On the back, there's the figure 8 power connection, an HDMI out, two super speed USB Type A ports, and an Ethernet port. Unlike the PS4, the PS5 does not feature an optical audio out. The stand is necessary because the misshapen nature of the plates means the PS5 can't sit flat on its side properly without it. It has a pair of small hooks which loosely clutch the back of the PS5 and a rotating base. Sitting flat, the console is simply perched on the stand without any additional fixtures. The base can flap around and slip left, right, or even off entirely, but that's something unlikely to frustrate unless you're regularly moving your console from place to place. Positioned vertically, a single screw is required to affix the stand to the console to prevent it from falling out of it. The slotted screw comes stored in the stand itself and is easy to install. If you don't have a flat screwdriver, a knife, or even your thumbnail will suffice. Appearances aside, there is one element of the PS5 that can't be as easily ignored, and that's the sheer size of it. Positioned vertically and perched atop its stand, the PS5 is about 40 centimeters tall, or 16 inches. 
With the stand switched, that figure is a fraction less when positioned horizontally, coming in at around 39cm, but even in this orientation, the PS5 is still just over 11cm high, or 4.5 inches, at the point where its top plate curls skyward. That's bigger than the grill-sized PS3 or the VCR-like original Xbox One. It's even bigger than two original PS4 stacked on top of each other. There are only two bigger white appliances in my house. One washes my clothes and the other keeps my butter cold. The PS5 fits in my furniture, albeit with the subtlety of a Humvee squeezing through a drive through but may not fit in everyone's setup. It's quaint that this year's biggest console comes from the land of capsule hotels and K-cars, and it's the American console that's more compact by comparison. Initial setup is extremely simple. For PS4 users, the slim PS5 manual describes the ability to connect your PS4 console and PS5 to the same network to transfer saved data, downloaded content, and user information, though it doesn't outline the process. For me, the much quicker alternative was plugging in the USB hard drive I've been using as extended storage for my PS4 for several years. It's a cinch, and the PS5 can access your existing digital PS4 games from it instantly. For long-time PlayStation users, the PS5 makes it very easy to browse your whole digital library and sort between PS5 and PS4 games. Oddly enough, there's a search field for PS3 games too, though it comes up empty. The PS5 UI doesn't feel wildly removed from its roots on the PS4, particularly as you get deeper into the menus, but it's definitely different and significantly more elegant in a number of ways. Now, a single tap of the PlayStation button in the center of the controller will bring up what Sony has called the Control Center, which is a little like a taskbar on a Windows PC. Checking things like current downloads and what friends of yours are online on PS4 requires a bunch of shuffling back and forth, up and down, and left and right through menu icons. The PS5's Control Center places all that info at our fingertips after one button press. The other key point of difference are dubbed cards, which are also presented on screen when you hit the PlayStation button. Some of these are just fluff, like links to newly published articles about games you're following on PlayStation and recent screenshots, though the activity cards seem to have the potential to be a little more useful. There's slightly frivolous information about how much longer it's estimated you'll need to complete a certain level or task, level or task, but there's also the promise of the ability to immediately view pre-made game hints without having to reach for your phone. For example, it was revealed earlier this week, the PS5 remake of Demon's Souls will feature over 180 help videos that players can opt to watch if they get stuck. The ultimate value of the PS5's activity cards is hard to gauge at the genesis of the PS5 though. Hopefully, developers will embrace them as useful ways to communicate with players while in game and not turn them into lists of additional chores. There's other interesting stuff sprinkled throughout the PS5's UI too though, from a global setting to invert the Y axis by default like the Xbox 360 used to do, to the ability to watch a friend play a game picture in picture while chatting to them as you play something else entirely. I'm not a particularly proficient multitasker so I can't say I'm very interested in the latter, but the former warms my old school upside down heart. One of this generation's most important upgrades is the switch from traditional hard drives to solid-state storage drives, dramatically improving loading times across the board and potentially enabling games to load in new objects effectively on the fly. The PS5's SSD can read 5.5GB in just a second, which is on paper twice as fast as the Series X. In practical terms, it means I could go from powering up from a complete shutdown to perched on top of whatever Manhattan building I last left Miles Morales on in a mere 45 seconds. That still leaves time to tap your toe, but once I was in-game, the time it takes to go from selecting a save to load to actually swinging through Spider-Man Miles Morales' open world is basically a blink. After generations of watching progress bars inching across a screen, it's pretty stunning stuff. I thought that was going to be the game-changing feature of the PS5, but to my surprise, it's really the DualSense controller that boasts the biggest potential. It may feel fairly similar to the DualShock 4 at first touch, but it didn't take me long to realize it's really an incredibly impressive new beast entirely. Largely the same shade of white as the console itself, the DualSense is just a fraction larger than the DualShock 4 and has a more premium look, particularly in the translucent buttons which have an almost glass-like appearance. The options and create buttons are also more raised than they are on the DualShock 4, so they're far easier to find without blindly rubbing your thumb beside the touchpad until you find it or glancing down. The DualSense also has a built-in mic, making headsets unnecessary, but it still has a 3.5mm jack for those who prefer to use them. The charging port is USB-C. However, it's what's on the inside that makes all the difference, and the range of haptic feedback the DualSense can provide is quite astonishing. Nuanced rumble travels from palm to palm and with a wide spectrum of effects. 
from almost imperceptible pulsations to massive vibrations. The triggers not only buzz with force feedback like the Xbox One controller, but also fight back and introduce a brand new layer of immersion. It's seriously remarkable. The pre-installed platformer Astro's Playroom is a pretty wonderful tech demo for the DualSense and well worth experimenting with. It's a rich and fabulous demonstration of the new level of feedback the DualSense can output, and an adorable tour through PlayStation's long hardware history to boot. For a hardware generation jump that's currently muddied with a lot of cross-gen content and an overall feeling of something more incremental than the often seismic shifts we've experienced previously, the DualSense has emerged to me as a bit of a revelation. I've had to plug it into charge every second day since getting the PS5, but it's worth it. In the power stakes, there's been a role reversal this generation, with Microsoft's new Xbox Series X arriving with reportedly 20% more grunt than the PS5. That said, it's a bit of a meaningless figure until we can properly examine how the Series X and PS5 cope with the same third-party games head-to-head. -head. Regardless of the apparent power disparity, however, doubling the frame rate to 120Hz will also be on the cards with certain game lighting effects that players who opt for increased frames may be forced to sacrifice. Spider-Man Miles Morales, for instance, has the option to switch between a 30 frames per second fidelity mode with the maximum amount of visual flourishes and a 60 frames per second performance mode without things like ray tracing and other advanced lighting effects and temporal techniques providing a 4K picture from a lower resolution base. Fidelity mode was easily my preference as without the slick lighting and real-time reflections it was a bit of an anticlimax. Despite all that horsepower under the hood, the PS5 is impressively silent and IGN's testing has pegged it at a virtually inaudible 44 decibels at 58 degrees Celsius in the midst of Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's a refreshing change from my current PS4 Pro, booting up Marvel's Spider-Man on that makes it sound like it's ready to be catapulted off an aircraft carrier. Unfortunately, one of the PS5's key strengths, its lightning quick SSD, is also one of its weaknesses. It may say 825 gigabytes on the box, but that translates to just 667 gigabytes of usable space, which is significantly smaller than the Xbox Series X's 802 gigabytes of usable space. There's room for maybe a dozen games, and even fewer if they're anything like current generation behemoths like The Last of Us Part II or GTA V. As I mentioned, you can carry on using any external hard drive you may have already been using in your PS4 and continue to play PS4 games off of it, but PS5 games can only be played when installed on the SSD. And while you can open up the top lid of the console to install an additional SSD for more internal space, there are currently no Sony approved drives on the market. PS5 games can be stored on an external HDD but need to be copied back to the SSD to play though the near instantaneous loading times for PS5 games may make this palatable. However, it's worth noting that losing time later to the task of moving stuff around when my SSD invariably fills up may feel a bit like robbing Peter to pay Paul. With a launch lineup dominated by games that are also available on PS4, and on the back of a generation already punctuated with incrementally more powerful hardware revisions like the PS4 Pro, the PS5 doesn't quite land as a knockout punch yet, but it's definitely got the power and speed to be a real contender, although the jury's out on the stamina of that tiny 667GB SSD. However, while the PS5's well-considered UI and blisteringly quick loading times for PS5 games make it a pleasure to use, it's the DualSense controller that's proven to be the surprise haymaker I never saw coming. It truly leaves other controllers feeling primitive in comparison. For more on the PlayStation 5, check out our in-depth review of the DualSense controller and our full unboxing video. For everything else on the new generation of gaming, stick with IGN. Hello and welcome to IGN's official PlayStation 5 launch day live stream. Happy PlayStation birthday, everybody. Uh, with me today are my co-hosts, Lucy O'Brien, Max Scoville, and Jonathan Dornbush. Today's live stream is presented by Hulu. Uh, we're very, very excited. We're going to be showing off uh, some of the biggest games coming to the PS5 at launch. Hopefully, you're able to secure one. If not, um, have another tab open, refresh sites all day long because uh, they're going in and out of stock all over the place. Um, so good luck. Uh, this is the day one launch day live stream of the PS5. Uh, today, we're going to be playing Spider-Man 
Miles Morales. We're playing Spider-Man Remastered, Demon Soul Remastered. Uh, maybe we'll get a little Astro Bot in there. We'll see what happens. And we'll get the ch uh, show off the UI. Uh, I'll be monitoring the chat on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, but that's enough housekeeping. <laughs> this is the crew of Podcast Beyond. I do a weekly PlayStation show with you guys. We've been doing it together for years. How are you all feeling today? This is bananas. I actually can't <laughs> believe that. Like, yeah. I can't believe that we are here. I, I feel like it was only yesterday that we were talking about the PS5 in really unknown terms, and now we have it. It's crazy. I'm so happy. Yeah, it's it's very surreal because we've spent so long, especially this year in particular, where we haven't been able to go hands on with the PS5 or really be able to see it beyond the, beyond the few reveal events that we've had. And to now actually just have it here and have been playing these games and now everyone is out there and able to do that. It is a very weird, surreal, but like particularly exciting feeling to have that. Yeah, this has been a this has been a rough year. I think a lot of people are well aware of that. And uh a handful of the, the launch games are just, they're really, they're really joyful and they're really just like fun in a kind of wonderful, colorful escapist way. And it's kind of nice to just, you know, have something to be genuinely happy about right now. So um, it's a good, it's a good time to be playing video games. <laughs> so uh, for uh, transparency, Lucy and uh, Dornbush, you've had PS5s for a couple of weeks now. Max, you've had one for a couple of days now. I haven't touched one. So I will be top playing as the audience today and looking on. Uh, and I have warned people that if my PS5 gets delivered during the middle of the stream, I will run out the door and go get it. And you guys Fair. can fend for yourselves. Uh, actually, I think that's that's true for all of us, right? That like is all, true. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So um, we you you might see some of us disappear at any given moment during the stream. <laughs> um, so right now we're taking a look at the UI. Uh, this is brand new, newly redone. Uh, we got to look at it a little while ago. Again, this feels surreal, Lucy. I think you named it. Uh, now that like we have been talking in unknowns for so long about this console, uh, and and sort of passive aggressively kind of being like sony show us how this thing runs what like what are we actually buying and purchasing and doing on day one uh but now it's here in the wild so um max walk us through the ui a little bit right now obviously you can see you've got a couple of games downloaded some brand new games uh some you know classic games so yes yeah, so, I, so it's greatest I mean, hits i think the way that they gave us a tour of, of the the bells and whistles of the, of the new ui it made it seem a lot more uh, kind of foreign and, and new than we were expecting, but it's pretty similar to what the PS4 was doing kind of at a glance. You've obviously got this sort of bar of your games here. You go to the far end and you've got your game library. Um, you can sort by platform. Um, so if you want to see just PS5 games, there they are. If you want to see, um, you know, obviously, you know, PS4. It's weird that PS3 is on here. I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know, I've I guess seen that's... a lot of speculation about that. Some mm. people think it might be tied to PlayStation Now, but obviously you can't buy PS3 games right now for the site, or for the PS5, excuse me, and they've said the PS5 isn't backward compatible, so it is a, it is a strange question that that raises that that's there. We'll have to see what happens. Right. Yeah, and right. one thing that's cool is the PlayStation Plus thing is right here. One of the best things about this console is the fact that, I mean, not this console, but like if you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, if you missed out on a PlayStation last gen, wow, this is like, you just get this out the gate, which is like so a pretty, good. this feels like a pretty big step up from like a little demo disc that used to be packed in with a, you know, like a PS1. Um, yeah, I mean, instead of having like a pack in game, you have what, 20 of them here? No, yeah, it rules. And it's also yeah, that's like- awesome. They haven't really gone into full detail. I don't like. I feel like a lot of publishers are probably going to start gradually kind of po poking their heads out and being like, "Hey, here's what's new and exciting about the latest PS5 patch that's backwards compatible." Like, if right. you go to the uh, what is it, the home screen here, um, there's an update about Metal Gear Solid Five, which is one of my favorite games ever, and they're saying that there's like, I don't know what that improves about it, but I'm totally going to check that out. Um, but we've seen yeah, like a so bunch of. The, the, this console now has sort of a baked in uh, news feed in sort, sort, sort of the way the Nintendo Switch had one. Um, and if you can see back on the, the, the PS Plus section there, um, day one you're getting bug snacks if you're a PS Plus subscriber. I, I don't know, did the did the console itself come with like a, like a code for like a, a week or a month or something like that at PS Plus? I don't know, I stole Lucy's. Lucy, did it have a code for that? No, it did not. <laughs> not that okay. I that I not that I saw. Yeah, I don't believe it did. But uh, granted, we uh, who knows if our boxes were any different since they were uh, pre-launch for review consideration. I'm, people can tell us at home if you've gotten yours already. If yours yeah, please, on. please but let us know. I, I just, I I just, I just want to note one thing quickly about this UI before we actually jump into the games is that I love how the PS5 really uh, prioritizes just 
playing video games, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it's like, it's it's so unobtrusive, this UI. I feel like the whole thing is just to, it's ease of jumping into the game. Everything is about playing the game. You don't have to go through multiple menus. You don't have to, it's just right there front and center. And I really, really like that about Yeah, this I mean, UI. a lot of us on, I know on PS4 had all our media stuff under that watch menu and it was kind of like too many steps to get into that. But in this case, you just, you know, you hit the shoulder, shoulder by the, the you know, R1 and it pops over to that. That's I was awesome. one of the, the I guess, few people who got their hands on the media remote. I did an unboxing <laughs> for IGN because that was like of all the accessories, that's the one they didn't send out to press to check out because it's it's just a remote, but at the same time it is it is kind of nice if you want to just, you know, use your um, you know, your PS5 to watch uh, movies or shows or whatever. Um, so totally. let's play some video games. Let's get into Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah, so, so uh, we're going to jump into Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, I, I would say the biggest launch game probably of the year across every platform, right? Uh, you know, no disrespect to the Series X. I love mine. I just got it the other day. But this is this is the sequel to one of the best-selling games of what we can now call the previous generation. <laughs> um, and you know, uh, this is Insomniac Games' 2018 Spider-Man, uh, and it's loaded. And it's loaded. Look at that. So, so we're right into so my class. class. Obviously, the the sequel to you know the, the original Spider-Man game from two years ago. Um, now, Max, like right off the bat, uh, where are we in the game here? I'm at like. Zero percent. This is in the middle of the tutorial. This is um, also I went back and played um, remastered, and it's almost an identical sort of step by step in terms of how it introduces you to the combat and traversal and stealth and you know etc. Um, so if you're worried about spoilers, we're going to try to skip cutscenes and avoid um, you know any plot points that might give stuff away. Mm -hmm. um, spoilers. There's the rhino. Yeah. Let's see. Can I? I think. Some cutscenes you can skip, but uh, Some yeah, I mean, count. again, this is this is uh, there we go. I think um, what I love about this whole sequence, and you know, obviously we'll see some of it, is, and I, I said this a bit in my review for it, but it, it's really great at one introducing you to all that stuff again, but also just showcasing if you're playing on PS5 how pretty it can be on PS5. Like there are shots in this beginning that are very clearly like, look at the environmental lighting of the sky, look at the amount of like particle effects and ray tracing we're able to pull off on the buildings and the Christmas time light displays. It is so beautiful and is such a great like premier launch day uh, exclusive to have. Yeah, and so Max, um, I'm really now, curious as to whether or not you're playing on performance mode or fidelity mode. Right. I this. think this is fidelity mode. Um, okay. I can check in a second once I fight the it bad looks guys. Like it, yeah. Now, um, and, uh, I, I've seen a lot of conversation around this game sort of like in a you know, not necessarily a negative fashion, but kind of undermining the fact that this is a shorter sequel uh, than I think people had expected. Um, we put some notes out on IGN the other day saying it's, it takes about eight hours to beat the story campaign. I, like some of you have finished this, uh, Lucy and, and Jonathan, I know you have. Does, yeah. does it feel like a full-fledged game to you? I know it is a little cheaper than um, the average PS5 launch game is. Yeah, it's, it's 50 instead of 70. It's 70 if you get the Ultimate Edition, with cut, which comes with Remastered. But it feels like a full game. It, it's one of those things where I get that, you know, the first game set the expectation for how long these games can be. But I personally love that they're not beholden to a certain length. Like, the, the story of Miles doesn't outstay its welcome. It's paced, I think, better than the first game because of that, because it's a little shorter. Um, and it tells a great full story in its own right. Like it does not feel like they cut corners or anything with the story here. So now we're yeah. getting a look at some open world swinging, um, which is I would, uh, everyone's favorite part. Where, where do you I would put Lucy? this uh, up there with like Far Cry Blood Dragon and um, Uncharted Lost Legacy in terms of doing something interesting on a smaller scale with sort of an existing framework of a game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and yeah. It, I, I just want to ah, sort crap. of add that like I, I was trying to finish this so I could hand off my PS5 to Max. And I was like, I think I'm nearly done. And then, you know, there were an, uh, there was sort of like another three hours of play. It's such a great game. It's one of those games that absolutely does not feel like, uh, like a point five. I, I, you know, I initially sort of said it's like Spider-Man 1.5, but really it does feel like a game in its own right. And I loved, I'm just echoing what, what, what Dorno said. I love, love, loved the story I, I, I it gave me sort of emotional gut punch this one yeah. um that i didn't actually necessarily feel in the first spider-man i think it was just perfectly paced oh. and it really does feel like a proper launch game i mean yeah. that's something else that, that i really want to echo uh, this is a launch game and it's 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 a winning launch game at that 
And it's, it has piggyback rides, which I think a lot of people playing the original game um, pointed out was really a missing feature. Um, this is insane because this is this is the Manhattan Mall. Like yeah, I, right. used, I, I used to I used to go to this mall all the time. Uh, this is obviously a much bigger version of it, but that that is a, a thing that's uh, that is worth pointing out. That this is you know obviously a pretty close to a one to one recreation of New York City. Uh, Jonathan, you used to live in New York, right? Yeah, yeah. And I so lived downtown for a few I, I, years. You and I have been talking a lot about how much we miss. Like, well, first of all, everyone misses traveling this year. But um, <laughs> the uh, live, New York City around Christmas time is something uh, that this game does a really good job of of glorifying. How did how did how did it feel for you to just sort of like fly around the city during Christmas? And Santa's here. Yeah, uh, as I always expected, Santa trying to say terrible things about Spider Man. Um, yeah, it's. <laughs> It, it really hits. Like I'm, I'm super excited for you to be able to jump in in that respect because it's for me. New York at Christmas time is sort of the like idealized version of New York. It is the one I think we all think of when we think of New York in movies often, and sort of maybe like people who don't live there may think mm -hmm. of the beautiful light displays and the Christmas tree at Thirty Rock and all of that. And this really, really does a great job of capturing that. And I think especially on PS5 in fidelity mode, the light fixtures that are on every street, the store displays, the especially at nighttime, like all of that feels alive in a way that New York at Christmas time did to me living there. Uh, so it's, it, I think it does a really great job of capturing that. Now, um, Sid in the YouTube chat says, uh, IGN, how does the PS5 respond to playing a high spec game like Miles Morales for a long period of time? I guess what he's sort of asking is, did, have you guys noticed any issues? Like, does it get loud? Does it get hot? Uh, that was obviously a huge thing with the PS4 Pro, even with the predecessor to this game. The running joke was that it sounded like a jet engine or a helicopter taking off. Um, have you guys noticed anything like that with this? this so console? much vape smoke coming out of the top <laughs> of my PS5. Uh, no, at, at least so far in my launch experience with every game, but especially with you know this in fidelity mode, I haven't heard the PS5 at all. It it's sounds insanely quiet, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like it's 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 so strange going from the PS4, which does sound like an absolute jet engine, to the whisper quiet of of the PS5. It definitely doesn't feel like it's straining after um, after a long you know a long period of play. Which I think is offset by the you know that that is one of the justifications for the fact that the PS5 is the largest physical video game <laughs> console ever made. Such it a is, beast. Yeah, it, it looks kind of like the, you know, Avengers Tower from the last Spider-Man game. It is a giant, giant console. Um, I think many of us have been sort of like looking at our entertainment centers or homes or living rooms, offices, whatever, uh, and trying to figure out where this thing's going to fit. So that'll be a fun puzzle today. Um, let's see. Uh, I will say that there, uh, you know, unsurprisingly, there's a lot of sort of like console fanboy argument stuff happening in the chat. Just save it. You know, we've had a hard enough year. It's not necessary. A lot of people saying PC gaming is great. It is, but you're using your PC to watch a PS5 game live stream. So let's all come together and just be nice to each other this week. Um, yeah. So uh, some people are also pointing out the, you know, the space on the console itself uh, is obviously something that our people are going to be running into a little bit. I believe there's something like 600, what 20, 667. Yeah, yeah. gigs. Um, and these these games are they're big boys. So. Uh, yeah. You will be managing the fridge for a little while. You will have external storage options eventually in terms of being able to run games off of external storage. That is not a thing you can do at launch in the PS5. Yeah, I will say on that note, um, obviously data caps notwithstanding, so if that's something you have to deal with, like that is an unfortunate side effect of this, but download speeds, at least on the PS5, have been incredibly quick at launch for me, um, mm -hmm. even more so than on the PS4. So it's, it's like, I, I do have decent internet, but it's not just that. There is a noticeable difference with the PS5. Um, so th that is at least one um, alleviating the hassle a little bit of having to re-download games. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Arjun Vinod on YouTube says, I want to work here. I'm not sure if he's talking about IGN. I will say we're always hiring, uh, but in terms of the city of Manhattan, also always hiring, large sprawling <laughs> metropolis full of jobs. Um, I would say in terms of what Spider-Man is doing here specifically, probably harder to do. It's a tough um, gig. <laughs> but you could shovel snow, you know, you could park cars. There's, you know, you could be a police officer. There's a million jobs in Manhattan, so. Don't work at Roxxon though. What is Roxxon? Uh, that's the the corporation that's moved into Harlem in this game. Oh. Uh, ma major major factor in the story, but yeah, I, a, I, I wouldn't work for them. They're Can a we thing in, talk in about Marvel. Miles? They, were, they were in sure. um, previous um, 
what Lego Marvel superheroes. Oh, that's right. That's it. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's a couple nods to them in Marvel Spider-Man. But yes, Lucy, you're absolutely right. Miles, please go ahead, because I love him, but I I wrote a review, so go ahead. Yeah, I just want to quickly chat about Miles, who I didn't really know before this game. I mean, like, I knew of Miles Morales. Obviously, we played him um, in the first Spider-Man, but, like, I didn't really know him as a superhero. And uh, I loved playing as Miles in this game. He's he's kind of... He's a teenager, right? And, And... He's kind of got that, uh, like that foolhardy confidence of a teenager. Um, I love his warmth and his heart. He's just a really delightful protagonist to play as. And I think, um, uh, Altano, you might have mentioned that the launch lineup is really quite joyful on the PlayStation 5. And I really felt that in this game with Miles as the protagonist. He's just such a, like, a lovely dude. Yeah. He's, um, I, you know, I love Into the Spider-Verse. It's probably my favorite superhero movie ever. And I'm currently reading the ongoing uh, Miles comic arc, which is fantastic. But mm-hmm. Insomniac does a really great job of finding their own niche within, like, the Miles storytelling pantheon already, right. which is quite cr- crowded. And they do something unique with him. They, they they make him feel really special in this game. Najee Jeter performing as him is so good and brings, like you were saying, Lucy, that, like, heart and earnestness that you would expect. It's, I, mm. I love him in this game. Now, um, one of the, like, I would say best parts of the last game uh, were unlocking suits. Um, and we saw some super cool ones going into this one. I don't want to spoil too many, but the ones that Insomniac have publicly released, um, which we're not, we're, we're looking at the base suit right now, right, Max? This is the one you start the game with? This is, yeah, this is the very beginning one. Um, it's actually, they've kind of, like, refitted the entire, I guess, sort of economy. Like, in the last one, it was like you had to get backpacks, you had to do outposts, and now it's just like, you have tech tokens and activity tokens, which kind of streamlines it in a really just kind of a nice way. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're still, you can still collect stuff and go and have fun, but it's less like, oh, I have to do this one type of chore to unlock this type of thing. Um, so that's wh- one of his new abilities here, the Venom Punch. The, um, he has so Venom, Venom uh, skills throughout this game, which is which is one of the differentiators in terms of combat from the original. What yeah. are the what are the collectibles like in this game? It's um, oh, well, sorry, go ahead, too much. It's uh, it's what is it? Time capsules. Time capsules are the um, the backpack equivalent in this game that give you a little bit of history for Miles and who he was before this game. There are some others that pop up from later game uh, side missions that I don't want to spoil. But I think in the same way that the backpacks did a great job for bringing you back into the history of Peter. Almost every side mission collectible with Miles does a really great job of telling you about Miles' life in a different fashion. And the uh, the terrible Doctor Oct- Octopus sliding puzzles are gone, right? Yes, there are there are no <laughs> no science puzzles, which I just did like a dozen of and remastered a night or two ago, and just put on a podcast because I was like, yeah, this is. <laughs> I want to I point something out. Like Ryan, you and I have both griped a whole lot about how much we didn't like those puzzles in in the original Spider Man, and that was like a big chore about not wanting to go back. I jumped into the remastered last night, and you can completely turn them off. Like, you can skip all of the puzzles if you want to. You can still do them if you want to, but if you just want to, like, get to the action, that's a thing. Um, that is very good to know. Uh, we, we have some people in the chat asking if this is PS5 gameplay. That is correct. Yes, it is. Uh, Max is capturing directly off of the PS5. Or streaming and directly I want to point something out. Like, I am playing... This is this is not 4K. This is... I mean, I am I think it's a 1080p stream at 60 a second, but we're playing in the higher res mode, so I don't know... I mean, we're seeing it's a prettier prettier game, but it's a lower resolution than you might get if you were hooked up to a good TV. So, mm-hmm. you know, and also you can't, I don't think you, you're seeing this in HDR. You know, it's like that the weird problem of this generation is so much of the stuff that they're bringing to the table. Like you guys can't feel the haptic stuff that's going on here, but that's a whole, that's a whole level to it. Yeah, we'll hopefully get into a little controller talk later because I'm, I'm super interested to see how that works out. I mean, one of the running themes we've seen from a lot of reviews is that the, the controller feels like one of the more sort of like specifically next gen things to come out of the new consoles launching this week. I have my Series X. It's awesome. It's fast. It's quiet. But the controller is roughly the same outside of like, you know, it feels a little grippier uh, and, you know, an extra button and stuff like that. But the, the DualSense is really doing a lot of uh, crazy new stuff, which we'll hopefully get to check out in a minute. 
Um, Real quick side note, I did want to point out uh, this stream is presented by Hulu, so thanks to our friends at Hulu for powering this. Um, this is a gigantic day for video games. We have been anticipating this for a long time. It feels surreal that it's actually finally here, and I'm very happy I get to host this stream with my good friends from Podcast Beyond, which you can watch or listen to every single week on IGN or your favorite podcast streaming platforms. Now, this guy, I imagine, is not a good man, this dude with, this, with the scarf. Well, what would give that away? <laughs> what? <laughs> He's got a haircut like that, you know. It's yeah, sort of, it sort of suggests that he may not be. Uh, right. He is. Later. Um. He is Simon Krieger, and he, I believe, heads the R and D department at Roxxon, uh, mm -hmm. and that's about all you know at this point in the story. Um, and he is one of those. Man, you probably might recognize that voice characters. Um. And I, I don't know if they've officially announced the voice cast, but it's pretty obvious. It's Troy Baker to me. <laughs> yeah, there I was are getting some familiar major, voices. I was getting some Topher Grace vibes from him. Yeah, yeah. I'm, try, I'm sorry to keep pausing. I'm trying to skip the cutscenes for anybody who doesn't want to get well, spoiled. Here's, and just wants I mean, to this is good because so. it's new Peter. You, this is yeah, a good right. scene, so maybe we can talk over it so it, does, it doesn't get fully spoiled. But uh, yeah, this is the new, new Peter Parker facial animation uh, going forward. Which was Which totally uh, sort, of, sort of, I mean, I, I feel like there's a, 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 a long slash short history of fans getting uh, oh, angry over mostly inconsequential things. Uh, Spider-Man 2018, Gate. yeah, notoriously kicked off Puddlegate where people looked at Puddles in the E3 demo versus the final version, and they weren't the same. But ultimately, they were, and it didn't matter. Uh, but this was a complete overhaul of the actor from the original game with a new face model, uh, which they not only added to Spider-Man Remastered, but is now in the sequel, too. Is, is Was this jarring for you guys at all? Because I'm going to be frank, like it doesn't really bother me at all. It didn't bother me like no. at all. I, I actually... You sort of forget as well, you know. It's like it's why it's what one of those things when you're playing a, an upscaled version of an older game. You just your brain just goes, oh, that's how it always looks, mm -hmm. and that's how I had that's how I felt with um with the new Spider-Man. Yeah, I, I was. He always looked like that. I was surprised when they announced it because it's surprising to see the character you know has a new face. That's certainly not a thing you expect every day. But um, having played all of Miles and now I'm playing through the remastered for review. I love it, honestly. I think it's it does fit the character really well. He He's a bit more realistic looking. The PS4 Spider-Man face, Peter Parker face, always kind of looked a little plasticky to me. Right. Um, and, and this, I think, has a little bit more of like the boyish charm that I would expect Peter Parker to have. I, I was never a fan of the of the 2018 Peter Parker design. It always just seemed like a little bit weird. Like his there was something about his hair that bugged me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this one looks kind of like a hybrid of like Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield, but also like his own his own person. Um, the hair in this one is phenomenal. And also like going to the remastered, which we'll show off in a little bit. I know a lot of people sort of look at that. They're like, oh, it's just going to be like upscaled, or you know, it's going to have better textures or something. It. it it looks like a different game. Like it's it, I beautiful. Mean, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's also worth pointing out. Um, we just got to look at the character models really close off, and obviously, we're you're watching this through a stream, um, so you're not going to get the entire one here. But I think it looked really good, and it is worth mentioning that Insomniac specifically goes with like a slightly cartoony approach to aesthetically to their art direction here this is not like a last of us situation where they're striving for complete and utter photorealism um there is sort of this like inherent kind of like loose almost goofy cartoonness to some of the character models in this game and, and the direction in general which i think well, totally, totally works right yeah and i mean look at these animations right like this isn't last God. of us 2 style realism this wanna, is this is more like into the spider verse i want right? to put out one point out one thing look at how like look at how Miles kind of falls like he's got much he's much looser yeah which makes sense because he's just figuring this out whereas like like Peter's he's been doing it for eight years in the in the last one but like he, look he's kind of flailing around a little bit yeah watching him like spin around a web because he misoriented himself on the swing and, and all these little touches even though he's doing functionally the same thing you do as Peter in the first game, like the animation really does sell that you're you're playing as a different character. Um, it's also like right down to that you see the cutscenes. He's got this kind of like torn bootleg North Face jacket, which you know maybe even Tommy Hilfiger is very evocative of like what you would see in the '90s in New York City. Like it's it's very different than. But, you know, it, it's got sort of like this weathered look to it. There's pieces of fluff sticking out, which I really love. Like he's, it, there's just sort of like a, a looser kind of aesthetic to the entire character, which I, I totally dig. He's he's a little more cumbersome. Like yeah, I, I love what you're saying there, Max. Like when you see him fall down, um, 
it it almost looks like there's going to be a minute where he's not going to catch himself there. Uh, one thing they also added for this is it's got like a full dedicated photo mode as opposed to the sort of selfie mode that was in the last one. Right, which you can quick map to the Let's see, D pad left and right. Uh, um, yeah, that's uh, settings, I think. Shortcut. Yeah. There we yeah, go. There you go. Yeah, that's rad. Um, Yeah, if you are in the chat on YouTube or Twitch, we are monitoring that. If you have questions for us, damn, look at that. That's... Yeah, I, I love that. The big new thing about this camera mode, which they went and put back into Remastered is great, is um, you can now add lighting. You can add up to three different lights to your shot. Uh, mm -hmm. And it can either be sphere lights or spotlights right now. And it totally changes like your thought process about crafting a photo mode shot because if it feels like something's missing just add a light in and it totally can change the look and feel this is uh, obviously uh, most recently something ghost of tsushima did incredibly well uh and i think that they basically set the standard for for photo mode and i'm really happy to see other developers on the playstation side continue to carry that torch one thing i will point out here um which is a stupid detail that uh, i'm i'm you know i'm obsessed with but uh Spider-Man's Nike Air Jordan 1s are not in this game. <laughs> he, is, he has switched over to Adidas, which is kind of sacrilegious, but I'm okay with it. Uh, I will say that I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of the Jays. They are like they so much more iconic. They're the, the, the sneakers you saw in Spider-Verse. They made limited edition Jordans to go with them, which I bought. Um, and he's got the Adidas now with the three stripe, the black and reds. They have little Spider-Man logos on the back of them. And they are making those. You will be able to buy those. Uh, but I personally am a little less excited for them. But still, you know, let him do his thing. He's happy. I believe that was, was that the Museum of Natural History or the Public Library? You just flew by right there. Man, I miss New York. Um, this is Ash Ashley Birch, this voice actress. Oh, interesting. Aloy, AKA Aloy. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. There it is. Um, is that the, yeah. Another thing, another personal detail I want to ask about a little bit. The I feel like the last game had a decent representation of pizza places in Manhattan. Um, how how has that experience been for you guys so far in this game? Is there a lot um, of good pizza in this game? Well, so I would say more than pizza. What, what this game really does is highlight bodegas. Um, I, I would say it definitely has less pizza representation, unfortunately, than the first game, but it does do a lot to represent how important bodegas are to normal everyday life. That's uh, right. Particularly and, and with, yes, don't know. More importantly, True. bodega cats. Yes, that is uh, that is a big part of the bodega culture. Um, yeah, Max and I did uh, we did a feature on Up at Noon a few years back of all like ranking all the pizza places in Spider Man 2018. Um, but I'm I'm very down to check out some bodegas in here. The uh, wow, God, this looks so good. Yeah, I think it's one of sorry, Lucy, go ahead. I was just gonna say like it's it's interesting, you know, you two being from New York. Uh, and saying that, you know, it feels sort of nostalgic. And it's mm -hmm. weird because it feels nostalgic for me. And I'm from New Zealand and I've never spent uh, Christmas in New York. But right. it's just, it's it's depicted so much in popular culture. Yeah. That it's, it's got this kind of like warm, nostalgic feel to, to, to anyone who's consumed movies from the 80s and 90s. Yeah, I, I did think it was really cool that they put a boss fight in this game where you have to beat up the Rockettes. Um, <laughs> that was a really interesting choice. That's a surprise. Like, I, was, yeah. I, I, I was shocked to see Miles break into the front doors of Radio City Music Hall and beat the crap out of all the Rockheads. And they can kick high, so that was a tough boss fight. Yeah, there's, was, a whole, not, there's a whole weird thing where you gotta you gotta break into your uh, your uncle's house. It's under restoration, and then you have to fight the sticky bandits and kill them with paint cans. It's really that weird. Is it's true. an odd choice. Yeah, it, I did feel like the the Elmo Times Square fight was just a little too punishing, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it, there is an entire night where you do have to camp outside of Duncan's toy chest from Home Alone Two, um, <laughs> which is this is I don't know, it's really cool. I think that they put all that stuff in there. Yeah, it's a nice um, homage. One thing I not to get into all this. One of the things I definitely don't miss about all this is stepping into those like six foot deep chasms at the at the, at the corner of every street uh, <laughs> that are just full of like you know black wet slush every time the snow melts uh, this is a video game so you won't have to experience that um <laughs> but he's also not wearing jordans anymore so i don't really care if he screws up the shoes um, so th this is uh, this is more tutorial stuff here obviously right max this is the, teaching us a little bit more about combat yep there are these holographic training robots oh are uh, Gerd Preet Singh on YouTube says, what is the size of this game in gigabytes? Do any of you guys know offhand? Uh, a little over 50, I think. Okay. 
Sure. Uh, so we have been uh, checking out tons of Spider-Man Remastered, uh, or Spider-Man Miles Morales. Not the only Spider-Man game you can play day one on the PS5. In just a minute, we're also going to play uh, the remastered version of the 2018 Spider-Man game, which got a whole bunch of new bells and whistles. Uh, but first, sports games are some of the best ways to show off your brand new toy, uh, regardless of your platform. And uh, we are going to check in with Ryan McCaffrey, who uh, got to see NBA 2K1 running on the PS5. Uh, so let's take a look at NBA 2K1 on PS5, presented by who? Make sure you practice the listed move. Until then, here's some more Spider-Man. <laughs> With every new generation of gaming consoles, the first thing people want to see is the improved graphics. And what better way to show that off than the iterative sports games that come out each year? Our own Brian McCaffrey got his hands on the PS5 version of NBA 2K21, and according to him, the results are impressive. Among the few dozen launch titles across both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, this might be the one you fire up first to show off your next-gen console's horsepower. Animations are much better with foot planting and momentum being key areas of improvement. Players also now take procedural steps instead of just canned animations, which leads to less quote unquote skating. Player faces are of course more detailed than ever and a little thing that sells it is that everyone else looks better now too. From the crowd, which finally has kids in it, to the referees, people at the scorer's table, dance team, mascots, mop boys, cameramen, security guards, etc. Visual concepts say they've added custom AI routines for 150 NPCs in the arena's lower bowl. In short, the whole look of NBA 2K has a much more holistic feel compared to the current gen versions. 2K Studio art director Anton Dawson told Ryan that the team has a brand new set of tools to scan players' faces and capture arena lighting, and they've been working on the next gen versions since midway through 2K20's development. In short, just about everything about the way players are brought into the game and then rendered and lit has changed, and you can see the results on the screen. This look at next gen graphics is presented by Hulu. Man, that game looks amazing. I am. I'm always like kind of bummed that I don't that I'm not like super that I'm, I don't know a ton about sports because like this, that game looks so good and I wish I could appreciate it for what it is. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have Hulu, who has live sports and you can watch live sports right there. And thank you to our friends at Hulu for presenting the stream today. We are still looking at Spider-Man Miles Morales in just a minute. I think we're going to jump into Spider-Man Remastered uh, and then maybe some Demon Souls and maybe some more. So we'll see what's going on. Um, once again, this is is the uh, podcast beyond IGN PlayStation 5 day one launch stream celebration presented by Hulu. I'm Brian Altano. With me is Max Scoville, Lucy O'Brien, and Jonathan Dornbush. And I cannot believe we are finally here. Uh, many of us are checking our phones in the middle of the stream. <laughs> Lucy, you might have gotten a phone, a several phone I, calls. The thing is, I just got a phone call in the middle of the stream, and it could have been someone at the door. But it could have just been a normal phone call, but I couldn't answer, so I just hammered, open door, open door, open door. Who can say? I have no say? idea. And yeah. now I'm really stressed. Uh, if you uh, are expecting a PS5 today, or you've got one already, I saw some people uh, getting, getting, doing in-store pickup very early. I will point out, uh, this is a, obviously a very different year than any uh, other year we've ever had before, uh, but specifically for consoles, a lot of them aren't doing, uh, none of them really did midnight launches. There's not really like big, you know, uh, store displays, supply drops and stuff like that. You won't be able to walk into a store and buy one. Uh, if you pre-ordered one, you can potentially do store pickup. But uh, for, for everybody else, keep refreshing websites today. Keep a tab open because if you want a PS5, this is your chance. All right, so uh, I feel like we've seen a lot of Miles Morales uh, and I don't want to see any more because it's, it's, it's <laughs> It's it's like watching somebody else eat food and I'm starving. So let's jump into something I've eaten already, which uh, hopefully tastes better with a brand new recipe before this metaphor collapses on me. Uh, <laughs> Spider-Man remastered, the remastered version of Insomniac's hit game from 2018. Uh, so let's take a look. Okay, so before we do that, I just want to point out, like we are jumping from one game to another. You can't do multiple games at once, but it's pretty quick to switch between them. So let's just like take a look at how fast this happens and... Uh, I'm I'm pretty happy about this because I, I I really I hate load times. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that there's no quick resume on the PS5 like there is in the Xbox Series X. But honestly, I did not really notice or care when I had mine because it's just so quick to get into the game. Look at, Look that. at that! Like really? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Now yeah, it's that was, possible that was, that was, like, was 
what was that 15 seconds between it's it's possible that was that was fast because coverage miles and spider-man are kind of in the same engine but like i i mean they they operate as, as separate <laughs> separate entities so like right. that's pretty impressive um now, yeah, this is <laughs> Max. What are what are your sort of biggest takeaways with uh, playing this game again? Did it did it, it did it click immediately after playing Miles? Is does it does it feel significantly better or improved in any way? So I was kind of like I was kind of dreading, not dreading, but I was like, I don't know. I really liked the 2018 Spider Man. It was you know really fun game. I really enjoyed it. Um, I I beat it, but I didn't go back to the DLC. I think I tried, and I was like, oh, I'm not feeling it anymore. Uh, after playing Miles, I'm like, I totally want to go do this again. And the fact that you can skip the puzzles goes a long way. Um, <laughs> cause you know, like, I mean, I, not to, you know, not to gripe about the puzzles too much, but like that, like the fun of this game is like, is this is like doing Spider-Man stuff. And like, yeah, Spider-Man occasionally hacks things and does electronic things, but you know, it's, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I mean, I've kind of been skipping cutscenes and just jumping as far as, as possible into the game. Cause I, I know what happens and there's, you know, there's stuff I'll rewatch, but right. um, I definitely wasn't expecting to want to, to replay this, but I feel like it's just, it's, it's got a, a certain amount of like ease of access to it. That's really nice. Yeah. I think for, for people who skipped it, um, this is, this is going to be just an, another, you know, gigantic treat to play on day one. Um, and I guess, I guess for people who played it before, it'll be a, a fun thing to play again. It is worth mentioning, this is where I always get confused, Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition includes this, right? It's the yeah. only way to get it. So it's yeah, the only you, way to get it. <clears throat> you can't buy Remastered on its own. You can, if you buy Miles on its own, you can upgrade to the Ultimate Edition, which is essentially just buying Remastered. Right. Or you can buy it at once and get it, but you can't just say, I want Remastered and not get Miles as of right now. Okay. Yeah, that's. I've seen a lot of confusion around that. Um, another point of confusion that was uh, definitely a lot of uh, talking in, in the audience was that... Um, the, your saves did not carry over. Uh, Insomniac recently did announce that they are rectifying that and that your saves from the... And you're gonna have to help me out on this one again, Jonathan. This is a very confusing <laughs> web. Uh, For sure. No pun intended. Uh, pun intended, yeah. yeah. So basically the... Um, <laughs> originally your saves would not carry over because I think the best way to think about it is essentially is remastered is a separate game from the original, even though it is the same game, you know, generally, I think it is being published essentially within the framework of the PS5 as a new game. So at first saves weren't going to work. Then Insomniac only a couple days ago announced your saves will be able to transfer over with a new update. It's going to come, they said sometime around Thanksgiving in the U S so sometime around the end of November. That'll be something you'll be able to do. Um, okay. So if you want to play Spider-Man Remastered, but you do want to carry over your new game plus save on PS5, maybe hold off a couple weeks. But right. yeah. Just play Miles instead. Exactly. Um, yeah. But I mean, you've, you've got you've got plenty of stuff to play in the uh, you know in the interim. Yeah, it, it's certainly not a bad experience to have to replay from the jump. Like I started a fresh save just to see how it would be, and it is. The amount of work that went into the remaster is really impressive right off the bat. Like it is, it is functionally the same game, uh, and so it's the same story, the same missions, all of that stuff. You will have all the DLC packed in, so all three of the DLC episodes are there if you didn't happen to pick those up. But it's otherwise the same game content. But the entire world has been relit um all of the animations for the the face the teeth the hair like all of the the sort of facial character stuff has been upgraded to what they've been doing with miles and that really really comes across in the cutscenes. it's it's pretty impressive to see max can you um can you fast travel because obviously that oh, was yeah, a, totally. a, a, a big thing in the in the original ps4 version is that you got on the subway and there was that whole cutscene, and that's when the game was loading it might be too oh, early in the game yeah crap travel. i didn't even show that you want to hop over to, we can hop over to my actually wait i don't think i have that unlocked either yeah um, it's you're too early in the game unfortunately yeah mm. um i will say that it's like it's it's virtually instantaneous it's like uh, maybe three that. seconds it's yeah. crazy mm. what's funny is there is an option to turn back on the subway animations Oh, so really? if you enjoy those, you can turn them back on and essentially artificially inflate your load times. But you like <laughs> the base version of them; it's too quick to even show those. 
The, Everyone's getting nostalgic for loading screens now. I know, right? <laughs> well, I think like sometimes they're done really well, and like in the original Spider-Man game, they were they were awesome. I loved them. They had a ton of personality. It'd be Spider-Man kind of standing there looking at you know some guy's phone. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, they added them in Miles Morales as well, right? But they're optional. Well, I mean, you get there is a small cutscene of you when you go into the subway in miles and then you come out of the subway there's a there's a very brief uh cutscene but it's just it's just to give some context of you exiting the subway right, right. it's just a little bit of flavor there uh one thing worth noting is that this does uh this does incorporate the haptic stuff from miles yes yeah so it's not just i mean i don't know i was i was kind of expecting just an up-res version of the 2018 game and i was Pleasantly surprised. Put well, it that it way, also, I guess. Yeah. It also does the 3D audio with uh, compatible headphones, so that's in there as well. And this uh, does it include all the DLC? Yeah, yeah. All three of the City That Never Sleeps episodes are in there, and any of the post-launch suits, like the uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit uh, right. and the bombastic Bagman suit, are in there. And you can unlock <laughs> those from the jump. Like I, th I think Max, if you wanted to switch over to those DLC suits, they're op options from the jump. That's oh really. Cool. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to note about the 3D audio, um, it's so all-encompassing that at one point I thought that there were choppers outside. That's it was It was so real to me. It's and, super um, impressive, yeah. So let me, let's actually, so let's show this off. This is one of the weirder things in this, um, on this system. Um, let's see. So for sound, uh, let's see. Where is it? Do they have it? Is it in here? Is it? What are you looking to? Oh yeah. So the adjust your 3D audio profile. I think it's. We have a whole weird thing, Jerry rigged. I wish I could show this off properly, but basically, um, my headphones are currently plugged into my my crappy TV, which I'm using to carry the stream. <laughs> it's it's a whole thing. But when you go in here, it gives you different options for how your 3D audio should sound, and it's basically a sound effect of a babbling brook, and it says like, choose the. Choose the one that sounds like the water level is closest to you. And <laughs> it feels like a Rorschach test because it all sort of sounds close to you. So I need to mm. I need to sit down and figure out exactly what kind of a you know what kind of a 3D audio guy I am. And hey, you... update, my PS5 has not arrived. <laughs> Apparently it was a telemarketer. Oh. oh. Well, that's expected, I guess. <laughs> Glad that they're back. It was so quiet after the election, but they've, <laughs> they've returned. In full um, force. Yeah. No, so uh, both of you guys are, and I, I'm planning on using this as well, the new, um, we're using the new Steel Series headsets, right? Yeah, yeah. Those work with the 3D audio. Obviously, the, the Pulse Sony 3D do, do, ones do, but yeah, I've been using the Steel Series, and they, they work fantastically. Awesome. That is... Yeah, let's let's maybe. These are my gloves that I use to fight crime and touch stuff. <laughs> um, the uh, most, you know, I think a lot of people were wondering how the rubber gloves would look this time around, and now we're getting our first look, which is really important. So yeah. Um, oh, all, nice. Yeah. So oh, it's dude. the. The post-launch DLC suits are all here from the jump, including the two um, Spider-Man Homecoming, no, not Homecoming, Far Away From Home suits, and then the three new suits for this game, which are the Amazing Spider-Man suit, which I actually think looks really cool. That's the Andrew yeah. Garfield suit. It, it looks really good. That's the Sam Raimi suit, and then the other two include uh, Arachnid Spider, which is my personal favorite because it just turns him into like a Power Ranger. What the uh, it's hell? The one, to, the one to the left, yeah. I love that. It's so I wish funny. they do the, um, the oh. Toho, like the the, the Japanese live action show where he had a robot that he would get inside. Oh so yeah. That, that suit right there was actually uh, designed by an artist I follow named Dave Raposa um, who does, he does like tons of uh, gorgeous like Evangelion fan art and tons of other stuff. Um, and he worked directly with Insomniac on creating this suit and it's beautiful. It's super yeah. weird. You know, like it's definitely outside of the, general aesthetic of, of these games but man i love it yeah this is that was actually one of my favorite parts the um the sort of cartoon animated suit was the one that i never took off once i started playing this game i think they should have included the atari suit that is a <laughs> yes. challenge that is a challenge to insomniac include the atari suit what's the atari suit you'll have to google it it's okay. hard to explain <laughs> <laughs> um yeah the um the Spider-Verse suit is 
probably what you're going to want to spend most of the game playing this time yeah. around. That is easily my favorite on the Miles side. But what's interesting about his suit lineup is because he's had, you know, so much less of a, a history to pull from, a lot of them are original suits for the game, and I personally think, like, I changed between more suits more often in Miles because a lot yeah. of them, I think, work really well, whereas with Peter, I tended to stay with, like, three or four of them. The, yeah, um, agreed. I, I've, I've seen a lot of sort of discussion today around how to get a PS5. Uh, keep in mind, IGN will be publishing and updating articles all day long on your best chances to do that. Um, we have, like, an incredible just uh, commerce ninjas working in the background to ensure that all of those uh, are up to date and up to speed. So keep an eye out if you're looking for one. If you're waiting, there's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, it is worth pointing out that Miles Morales and uh, and and, and Spider-Man are all available on PS4 right now. Um, I believe Demon Souls uh, and you know Astro's Playroom and a few others are are, are PS5 exclusive. But who yeah. knows? Sackboy is also cross-gen. Yep. Um, Do we think the new God of War is going to be cross-gen? That is a really good question. I want to say yes, because it is worth pointing out a couple of things. One, there's like 120 million PS4s in the wild. Two, Sony has specifically stated that there's going to be like a three-year transition period. Um, and if you remember how things went with the most recently Nintendo Switch, uh, there was that first kind of year where things kept coming to 3DS. And we were like, right. put it on Switch. Bring it over, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. But the cross-gen strategy here seems to be working for them so far. I do think eventually they will transition away, but I have a feeling that anything big coming to PS5 in the next sort of calendar year will also come to PS4. My, I, I'm with you there, and I think my only caveat would be that if ever they wanted an exclusive to get people to have to buy a PS5, God of War would definitely be the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's sure. That's um, a very good point. But yeah, I, I think it just really depends on what the Santa Monica team is doing and what their vision for that game is and sort of like when the development started in full um, and what they've been planning. But yeah, I could see it going either way. We did get some questions on uh, YouTube um, asking what the best Steel Series headphone is. I'm on their site right now. Um, the Arctis 7P, the Arctis 1, Arct Arctis 1 Wireless, Arctis 3 Console, 5, 7, and 9 will also, and the Pro will also give you all give you 3D audio on PS5. But it's actually like a, a ton of um, Steel Series headsets support 3D audio. So that's that's good to know. Oh, really and we should, we should that. note that we did, they didn't sponsor us, but they did send us these. So, you know, yeah. full disclosure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I, but, I, but also it's worth noting that the Pulse headset isn't the only headset that will give you the 3D audio. You know, yeah. you're not you're not tied to that if it's unavailable. Right, yeah. right. Um, but I believe the remote is the only remote that will operate your PS5. Um, and those are weirdly sold out everywhere. I keep like, I don't even want one, but I'm just like curiously looking because I feel like that that one, like Max was alluding to earlier, is sort of the black sheep of the uh, of launch accessories. Um, <laughs> you want one because you can't get one. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. actually ordered I ordered the camera and then canceled the order because I was like, I don't need this. What, what would I even use this for right now? Because it's like, is, is there anything really supporting the camera on day one? I mean, I just... If you wanted to stream directly from your console, I guess. I, I gotta tell you, I've used the camera on the PS4 as a login, and there is nothing more satisfying than starting up your PS4 and just getting an image of yourself lying on your couch. Yeah. Just I, like, I, here I, you go, time for games. I'm a big fan of seeing just like low res <laughs> blurry versions of the part where my neck meets the rest of my body. Yeah. And it's just like, like when you catch your reflection when you're playing Switch. Oh my God. And it's just that, that is, double I, chin I think it's, monstrosity. it's great that they, they brought the, the mobile gaming experience to console, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like actually the most. Remember when you used to be able to hang out with friends, you would open up your phone and go to take a picture of everyone, and it would just like default to like the selfie. We're just like, <laughs> just the worst. But now we don't have to do that anymore. It's great. Um, we just nice talk on these the webcams. So anyway, this is <laughs> this is Spider-Man remastered. Uh, some obviously new graphical bells and whistles. Max, did you have? Do you have the option of this game of like performance mode versus? Uh, is there anything like that? Like if you go into the settings? Yeah. Uh, let's let's show that off if we can. I don't know what that. Uh, visual would be under Where it. Is it? Yes, that makes sense. 
Oh yeah, so it's got the same two modes so, in, in remastered awesome. as well. Yeah, and it didn't have a 60 frames per second mode, I believe, on PS4. So this is the first time seeing this game in 60, and it, it definitely shows. Yeah, that is a um, buttery really? smooth. Let's see, Sid, Sid says, "What is the basis for uh, multiplayer games like Fortnite or Modern Warfare? Will PS Plus be a necessity?" That's a good question. I don't think PS Plus is a necessity. No. No, no, right? be- because everything is becoming cross-gen, cross-platform. Right. It, um, it this, is for this, some games. Um, I mean, not. I, I mean, not everything, but I would say the, yeah. the sort of big industry leaders, like the fact that Modern Warfare, or not Modern Warfare, the new, the new one, whatever. Uh, Warzone. Call of Duty, Black oh, yeah. Ops, Cold War. Cold War. Yeah. Uh, Return to War Island or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. It's Cold that War is like Mark cross-platform, cr- pl- cross-gen, which is kind of crazy to think about. Which um, uh, Ubisoft is doing with all their third-party stuff, which I think they sort of like quietly snuck out yesterday. Um, but yeah, if you well, start Valhalla on a PS5, you can carry your save over to a Series X. But Tina, our Tina Amini, our editor-in-chief, she, um, she was really bummed because she started Valhalla on her PS4 and then she got a code for the Series X and it transferred over. Yeah, it's so oh, cool. no way. Which is from PS4, which is that amazing. Is, that yeah, is they huge have a- news. They have an I, app that centralizes it. It's fantastic. I love that because I so I have a, I have an Xbox One S and I borrowed a Series X to do a, a stream of the first few hours of Valhalla and I was into it and I was like oh I'll just pick it up on the Series S and like going from a Series X to a to a not a Series S a a One S like a basically a launch Xbox mm-hmm. is that is hard to do that is a <laughs> that is definitely like a noticeable step down. Uh, it I still do. runs but it's just you know. I do want to give out a shout out to one of the most, um, I think, like biggest surprises of every console launch, and that is remembering that UPlay exists. <laughs> most of us, we can go months or years without remembering UPlay exists, and then we, we get those brand new consoles, we start those brand new games, and then you gotta log into UPlay to get those the the Viking hats or like the unicorn gloves or whatever they want to give you. So, big shout out to UPlay. <laughs> for, for existing. Um, we are going to hop over to Demon Souls, uh, a game that is very, very different than the two Spider-Mans or Spider-Mans that we've been playing. Also, um, like I, I feel like I've been kind of holding my own in, in Spider-Man, doing okay, and, and being able to hold up a conversation while not dying repeatedly. That mm-hmm. might not be true with Demon Souls, and I just want to preface this. Listen, no, no, no. This is a we hard game. We believe in you. And I, that's great, but I, you know, don't, don't place any bets. I just, before <laughs> anybody clips out me dying repeatedly on very early enemies, I just want you to know that Mitchell Saltzman, who was busy reviewing this for IGN, managed to be, I think, one of the first people in the world to beat it. Um, he was the fastest complete time. He beat it in like nine hours and he died twice. So just, it's not- He I, died twice? Yeah. Twice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's now, jump into that. So to the, to the, like the, the, you know, the Soulsborne community, when you do clip out um, Max's part about dying, feel free to keep that part on at the beginning where he talks about how he's not good at the games. If you cut that out, um, you you can do that too. That's fine. It's, it's, should we just should we just start a file from the beginning here? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Because so you yeah. want to look at the character customization. In the interest of time, should we should I skip cutscenes or what do you think? Because yeah, 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 let's yeah. yeah. Okay. This also gives you an idea of the load times because a lot of the times cutscenes hide that. But um, once again, like the load times in this are just so Guys, good. I'm so excited that we get to play a Souls game at. at at launch it's insane you know on when, a next when, gen console it's just oh I'm when, just when so this happy. game first got announced there was um uh there was that sort of like hope that that could happen and i remember reading like a couple months later that the game got certified which always means that it's like it's coming sooner than than we expected and then when they straight up said this is going to be a launch game this to me became like the definitive launch game because this is ps5 exclusive from just what i'm reading on um twitter from people around the industry are just saying that like this is one of the most beautiful games ever made they're stopping the gawk at you know all the candles on the floor and the weird ambient lighting and hdr and stuff like that so which is um, which is like, honestly which is so it's just great. it's unfair because if you stop to gawk at it a skeleton's going to jump out and punch you in the face <laughs> right that's die. true but like these games you know they're meant to be played played through very methodically they're meant to be played through you know at your own pace right that's how you're meant to play a souls game and i just think the fact that this is so beautiful really encourages that um are you gonna make guy ferrari no i already did i'm just i'm shuffling <laughs> so, here it just gives you an idea of the character creator this is yeah so this is um very different than the original game obviously that was a t- there's a lot of very terrifying faces in here um 
this is this is a fully robust, fully customizable character creator this time around, uh, and I believe you can basically <laughs> make anybody. We saw somebody make Samuel uh, L. Jackson in Bloodborne and do a whole playthrough. Um, you can just go so much crazier. This is basically like a possessed Sharon Osbourne. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> Let's do it. It's, this is Totsy. Um, I want to point out <laughs> if you are if you if you're bad at games and you and you want to if you want a little bit of advantage, I was actually very surprised at how much easier it is if you pick the royalty class because you start out with a spell that effectively one hits enemies in the first area and mm. like a lot of other FromSoft games you basically have to beat the first boss or you have to die in the first boss to be able to start grinding so if you want to give yourself a little bit of an advantage that's the way to go um, also if you've just picked up this game uh, as of an hour ago we published nine tips for beginners um, please check that out we made sure it was the most helpful tips we could offer and um, I'm, I'm going to skip the tutorial here because I Let's do it. Feel for it, but this is uh, now and... uh, for for many of us, me included. This is going to be a brand new game, but this is a remake of uh, one of the I would say one of the initial, one of the most sort of like I Im impactful games of all time. One of the games that kind of kicked off this entire genre, the original Demon Souls, um, which is what 11, 12 years old at this point. How old is this? Two thousand and nine. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Um, and so I've, I've seen a lot of chatter about what this remake does well and what it doesn't. Um, there are some enemies that, you know, uh, didn't don't look as good to me this time around, but I'm also going to this game brand new. The UI is obviously a lot more cleaned up um, and it, I, I would say loses a little bit of charm, but other than that, this is this is a stunning video game. This is done by Bluepoint, who's worked on the Shadow of the Colossus remake. Um, they're, they're constantly toiling away at making video games that we remember playing look like how we remember playing them, as Lucy was saying earlier. So, and Lucy, you played the original game, right? I did, but you know, I played it in 2009, so right. it's been a while. I'm certainly not, you know, Mitchell Saltzman uh, level versed in Demon Souls, uh, but I do remember it being a, a stunning experience because it was unlike anything I'd played before. Jonathan, I think I remember yesterday you were talking about how you played through the first section, and it was just like back then, it was just like. Video games aren't meant to do this. No. Yeah, I, I had no concept of what it was going in. I had just heard, like, this is a great game for the PS3, and I had gotten a PS3 recently, so I was like, okay, let me give it a try. And I didn't know anything about the difficulty going into it. Like, I did not know that it was part of the game. And so right. I kept kept dying. Like, I died so many times, and it's that thing, of course, like, when you die, you lose all, all of your souls or whatever they are in this game. And so I just kept saying, like, why is it taking things away from me? What kind of game <laughs> would do that to you? And so I stopped, and then, you know, a decade later, I'm like, this is the game I'm most anticipating for launch because it, I'm excited by the prospect of it now that I understand it. Right. I remember Demon's it Souls was the first game I ever played where I would stumble across areas, or at least I remember playing, where I would stumble across areas that I wasn't meant to, to, to be in yet and just being overwhelmed by that you know like in a good way just seeing like this enormous beast that i knew i i wasn't leveled up enough to face but it being there and it feeling so organic and real as if it had always been there right. and of course that's what souls games do so well i i will say as like a as an old man uh these games have always been kind of the spiritual successor to like hardcore NES action platformers, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts uh, for the Super Nintendo. That was, Su Ghouls and Ghosts was a, Super Ghouls and Ghosts was a launch game for the SNES. And it just kicked your ass up and down the game. And you just got better and better at it. And it, it, it just felt like a weird punishing thing to launch alongside Super Mario World, which is this colorful <laughs> action platformer. Yeah, and then switch over to this like, miserable dark grim game where when you got hit your your you were stripped into your underwear uh you know left running around <laughs> terrified in a cold graveyard um and so i'm really hoping that this game brings a lot of those feelings back for me i'm sure it will i'm sure it will uh remember this uh this is our PS5 uh, day one launch stream festival fiesta party celebration presented by Hulu. Uh, Hulu is on the PS5 and uh, you can watch tons of stuff on it, including live sports. So go check that out. Um, we want to thank our friends at Hulu for powering the stream and uh, giving us an opportunity to show off some of the biggest and best games on the PS5 launch, along with the hardware itself. And also uh, while we sit here furiously refreshing and looking at our phones, 
expecting our own PS5 deliveries to get here. Remember, you can check out IGN for all the day one coverage, all of the reviews, wikis, how-tos, previews, features, best and worst things, uh, everything about the PS5. It's finally here, and I am ecstatic. One of the really cool things about seeing this in action is that, uh, you know, the servers are online. The PS3 game is so old, but you actually can't find anyone to play with. There are no bloodstains <laughs> or anything. And uh, you can do that now because there are so many people playing. Right. So right. if you're stuck, if you're stuck, remember you can call for help. I almost thought you meant like you could interact with the PS3 game servers. And I was like, that is some old ghosts <laughs> <laughs> running around in here. So um, this is, um, I, as I mentioned, this the, the starting gift of the, the Soul Era or whatever is like, it's it's kind of cheap, honestly. Like I was sort of expecting to be like get my ass kicked a little bit more going in, and I definitely did because I picked a you know melee class initially. But like I'm like just one hitting these dudes, so I can we can just scamper up here and kind of get into the game. But yeah, if you're if you're if you're a cheap coward like me, this is a good way to go about it. Look at that <laughs> lightning wow. bolt. I've never been ashamed of cheesing a Souls game. Thank you. They wouldn't put it in the game if they didn't want you to use it. I will say publicly on this stream um, that I'm very good at these games, but also I was stuck on a boss in Sekiro that I could only beat by holding onto a ledge and with my right hand slashing at his ankle for about, I don't know, 17 <laughs> minutes straight as he went, oh, oh, oh. And then eventually he died and I won. And there's no honor in that, you know, like in terms of, you know. Hey, whatever gets you through, man. Whatever, whatever, gets, whatever gets you through. through. Whatever Shadows gets you die through. twice, honor dies once. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Um, one thing that is very cool about this, I was really curious about it watching the sort of the demo stuff, is um, the haptics give you like a little, like, so this guy's about to throw a firebomb. Oh, well, no, he's going to just jump off the edge. That's weird. Um, <laughs> they, it gives you a slight, uh-oh. So it gives you a slight rumble right before they're throwing a Molotov at you, which is extremely Useful. helpful if you're, mm -hmm. you know, trying not to die, which you should be. Um, what, is the, what does it feel like to play this, Max? Like, in terms of the feedback you're getting from the controller? So, the amount of noise the controller makes, I don't know if any... Oh, come on. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, you can probably hear it from my... <laughs> I'll, I'll just hold it up here, because you can hear a lot. I was playing last night, and I forgot... Like, I forgot to put my headphones on, because the controller was making so much noise. <laughs> which is... It's weird, you know. That's an odd. That's an odd way to go about it. Um, right. um, Eric Olson says, "Can you use a 1080p monitor on the PS5?" I don't see why you couldn't. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. It doesn't. I mean, it doesn't require 4K. It'll. It'll still like give you a lot of the you know visual upgrades. You're just not going right. to get like full HDR and. Ah, <laughs> 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 um. Kylan Workman says, we're the Spoderman. I think he means either he's a Spider-Man or he's asking us, where are the Spider-Man? Spoderman um, got out of here. Yeah. Spoderman uh, <laughs> Romostard was uh, shown earlier, and we also played some Moles Morolos, um, if you want to check that out. Just scrub backwards in, this, in the stream, and you'll get to see about an hour of us playing oh, multiple Spoderman oh. games. Even being cheap, oh. I died. Look at that. I like that they're just like, Phantom, you are not able to do the thing you're supposed to. Get out of here. Um, Have you encountered like a black phantom yet, Max? Oh no, I'm in the. I mean, like the first area. This is. Yeah. I mean, I have. I unlocked a couple shortcuts eh, yesterday, but like I didn't. I'm still pretty much in the, you know, the baby zone. Yeah. That's that's one and of again, the things. Check out the the tips page for. Um, for good places to uh, go to if you're new to the Soul series mm -hmm. in terms of like warming yourself up to 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 the game. Yeah, and I will say, uh, and I you know I've, I say this before every one of these games, these are like by design punishing games, and it is okay if you get frustrated and put the controller down, but if you are even remotely interested in in conquering them or at least exploring them, please push on because it is worth it. Uh, I like notoriously told the story on Podcast Beyond about how I gave up on Bloodborne and was like, no way, screw this game. And then just kind of like walked outside, got some air, came back inside and, and, and started playing. Once you get over that initial hump, 
you will find one of the most rewarding ex video game experiences you can get across this entire medium. From soft oh, games, yeah, they are amazing, amazing games, and they kick your butt. But you, I believe in you, and you can do it. You can also just you can get real cheap with them, and you know, like, like they don't Which they is... don't their tutorial is a bunch of like weird notes scribbled on the ground, and then an area that kicks your ass until you figure out why you're getting your ass kicked. Right. But, like, that's... like, don't be afraid to ask for help either. Like, look for help, ask for help, like, both online and within the game. Right. There's no shame in that. We all do it. Now, uh, Omar Rios in the YouTube chat says, what's the battery life on this controller? That's actually something I haven't, I mean, obviously, uh, companies put out their official specs and numbers, but what have you guys experienced sort of in the wild? Astros will drain your DualSense wow. like nothing else, but that's <laughs> primarily because it's a showcase for the DualSense, so that thing is doing everything it can. It's doing its little dance for four hours straight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I might, two bars here. Uh, I think this was plugged in charging all night. It's unplugged now. I mean, it obviously, if you're worried about battery life, turn down your haptics. Uh, one weird thing that they don't tell you is... Um, by default, there's a microphone that's turned on. So if the little light on the controller is off, um, that means that your microphone is on, which means that the haptics get basically like turned down, which is mm -hmm. you're kind of missing some of the fun there. Which is also, I saw some chatter about this on social media. Uh, it is picking up the feed in your room and presenting it in multiplayer lobbies. So that sucks. So yeah, turn that off. <laughs> um, I saw a question here, uh, or no, a comment from uh, Zizo Walid. He says, Still 30 frames per second on Bloodborne. That's a bummer, honestly. I'm with you, man. Like, it is such a bummer that um, that game never got a pro patch and that it's not doing anything, you know, it, it, it didn't really get any significant upgrades on the PS5. But I don't know, maybe we'll get a, a full-on Bluepoint remaster like we did with Demon's Souls, uh, what, seven years from now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm still stoked that you can play Bloodborne yes. on the PS5. That's still just a, a great thing that is out in the world. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is a shame considering how many fans are after an upgrade and we don't have one yet. Right, right. Yeah, um, and how have you guys dealt with uh, like saves carrying over? Is that pretty fluid so far? Have you messed with that? Inconsistent. Interesting. Um, we got a tweet from Sony Santa Monica saying God of War saves do carry over. I couldn't get them to work from cloud. Okay. Um, I also was trying to download a PS4 save for Metal Gear just before we started the stream and it said an error occurred with no further information. So that's, <laughs> you know, that's a fun science experiment. But my, um, my cloud saves for Tetris Effect and Crash 4 carried over just because those were recent games I was playing, so I tried them. Uh, right. Those had worked, and if I've... I'm able to access my saves from the cloud, but yeah, Max had been telling me about running into those issues. So I, it, it may be something that will probably see some patches if there are any issues in the first few days. I'm sure they don't want to prevent people from jumping back into their games for too long. Now, I'm hearing encouragement to use a, a LAN cable oh, as opposed to yes. uploading yeah. from the cloud, right? at least right now, until that patch comes. Yeah, we, we, I, I mean, we actually have uh, an article that just went up today on IGN that I was just reading um, that I think says something along the lines of, like, please, for the love of God, use a LAN cable. <laughs> yeah, it's um, when you start up the PS5, one of the first steps is, like, do you want to transfer your stuff from a PS4? Make sure they're connected by LAN cable to the same router. And it's it's one of the startup options. So it is very much, like, apparent from the jump to use Yeah, that. that's that's my plan today when it shows up is um, sort of transferring uh -huh. everything from the PS4 to the PS5. And then, I don't know, putting taking the PS4 Pro and... I, it's it's got to go live in a closet somewhere or, you know, get donated to a hospital or something. I don't think I have any need for it anymore, right? Like, is there really... Mo like, there's, there's a, in terms of games that carry over and are backwards compatible, it's like 99% or something, right? Yeah, I think there's like 10 games that don't work and it's, it's none of the... Most high-profile stuff, so like all the first-party stuff works. Mo I think all of the third-party stuff maybe... Uh, uh, I think it's 10 to 12 games total that don't work, so yeah. And those are listed on Sony's website, and you're not missing out. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, now, I've I've had the controller for a few days. I haven't really been able to do anything with it outside of gawk at it. Um, you guys have spent significant time with this platform. How how do you how do you like the controller in general? Like, even sort of, you know, haptics aside and stuff, just holding it and playing action games for hours and hours on end. Like, how, how, do you guys think it's a significant improvement? I love it. It's I wasn't I was 
vocally not the biggest fan of of the um, previous DualShocks, um, the previous controllers, six six that sixth axis or yep. whatever they were called. It's it's going back a bit. Um, this is for me the most comfortable controller. It's definitely more. Um, it's it's bigger. It's weightier. It like it doesn't hurt my hands uh, after long periods of play. Uh, so I'm a massive fan of it. Obviously the haptics uh, and feedback. I, I hate using this word, but honestly, they're a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> I'm using it anyway. I get uh, it. It's just are they it's the are, most are they immersive? Incredibly, yeah, incredibly <laughs> immersive. It's very visceral. I would yeah. say very yeah. visceral. Um, it just it's a it feels this is the thing to me the dual sense that makes this console feel properly next gen. The Series X, I love, and obviously huge, you know, graphical uh, upgrade there, and, and and the speed and everything. But it feels like kind of like a an improvement, whereas the DualSense feels like something brand new. Right. Oh. Well, that, <laughs> that could have got. There's the ball. Way. I get. I guess I got a free thing though. Look at this. There's a little thing down here. You oh. do. Yeah. There was a free surprise inside that. I got ball. the swear word sword. Oh my. Oh. Yeah, Lucy, I've seen a lot of people say that you can really feel the game. Yeah. I mean, yes, that <laughs> it's a, it's a, you it sound really, like a marketing man, but it yeah. is true. It really makes you feel like Demon's Souls. I'll put it right. that way. <laughs> Sorry, John. This year's E3 it's promises fine. Look, to be the let, biggest. Of <laughs> let me tell you, trying to write four reviews in the past two weeks about the dual sense and not using the word feel sure is a fun yep. challenge. It really yeah. lets you feel it, spider man. It's the it's the dark souls of review writing, let me tell you. <laughs> it really oh, makes God. you feel like a controller. <laughs> um let's see. Yeah we uh we're we're still in Demon Souls Remastered right now, as you know. Uh, this stream is presented by Hulu. Thank you to our friends at Hulu for uh, getting the podcast Beyond Crew together to celebrate the PlayStation Five on day one. Uh, download the Hulu app as soon as you get your console uh, and get some games too, because uh, there's a lot there. We did talk earlier about the PS Plus collection, which I think is awesome. You can also get Bug Snacks on day one if you're. Uh, a, a PlayStation Plus subscriber, uh, so there's a, there's a lot there. And if you get Miles Morales, you do get Spider-Man Remastered. So you can really start to build out a decent library here pretty quickly. Um, but this is Demon Souls Remastered, the remaster of the uh, now 11-year-old uh, original game. Um, I believe this game is $70, right? There is a, a, a small price hike happening on the PS5 that I don't think the rest of the industry really got the memo on. Uh, and I've seen some chatter about why that's not necessarily the greatest thing, but um, here we are anyway. How do you guys feel about all that? About the $70 price hikes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, for me at least, like at launch, it's interesting because right now, uh, Miles is 50, Sackboy is 60, Demon Souls is 70. I think Destruction All-Stars, before it got delayed, was going to be 70, but that's right. also coming to PS Plus. We're seeing them do a, a variety of, like, prices, but I think the ultimate goal is eventually to get games to be 70. Um, and it is a it's a tough pill to swallow when we've been doing sixty dollars for two generations. Um, I, I think it is one of those things where, like, obviously, prices of developing games have gone up, uh, and game development teams have increased in size. Is the extra money going to the devs? I don't necessarily know, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more companies try to push for the seventy dollar price point. Mm -hmm. I'm also the worst person to talk to about this because I come from the land of, well, when I was in New Zealand, games were 109.99, right? And True. you know, Australia 89.99, 99.99. So I'm used to paying top dollar for my video games. Yeah. Um, if you're in the YouTube chat, tell us how much uh, games and uh, PS5 games and the PS5 console itself uh, cost in your region. I saw. Uh, someone posted before about how expensive it is in Turkey and keep in mind I have no idea how the currency works there but it looked like one of the highest numbers I've ever seen attached to a video game console <laughs> so um, let us know um, yeah NBA uh, as Beats Games Life points out NBA 2K is $70 on PS5 um, so yeah this is you know this is where we are with some games here now uh, but you know that you, you get you get these exclusives like you get you get to play Demon Souls Remastered. It's not 
It's it, w we knew this was going to happen eventually. I'm also again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm old. I remember buying like garbage like Clay Fighter 33 and a third for the N64 for like eighty dollars. And so <laughs> there's also I will say, especially like with launch, you see a few of them, but there are a ton of great indie games that cost twenty to thirty dollars, if not you know somewhere in between, that will last you dozens of hours. I think like Hollow Knight is twenty dollars and is one of the best yep. Metroidvania's ever made. Um, there are plenty of really, really great games that, you know, PS5 visuals aside can last you a really long time and be really great if you're looking for cheaper options. And also the PSN has sales every week now. So I'm sure we'll yep. see some of these $70 games on sale in the new year. Yeah. I mean, I, I say this a lot, but being an early adopter isn't, it, it has a few upsides, but for the most part you get a, you get way more of a deal and kind of every level if you wait, like, yeah. Um, Car Kartik Shiel on YouTube says the, uh, PS five in India is 618 us dollars. Um, Zizo wallet says 1500 or maybe more in Egypt. Um, 730 us dollars in Iceland from HL 07. Uh, yeah. So this is, this is a pricey system. Um, yeah. 1,800 in Mexico, uh, 1,000 in the Middle East. So uh, if you live in a place where this is incredibly expensive, keep in mind, like we said earlier, a lot of these games do play on, on current gen, or I guess now last gen platforms. Uh, and so it, it's okay to wait. It's okay to wait for a price drop or a revision. I imagine these systems are gonna get mid-gen hardware revisions, but um, if you can afford it, PS5 is here uh, today. And Max, you just went through a fog cloud. So that, does that mean a boss fight's coming up? I totally thought it did, but that's an old Demon Souls thing, which I think was how they handled loading back on the PS3, mm -hmm. but um, that's totally not the case. <laughs> I'm going to write a note. Ooh. Are you going to write a helpful note? Or I'm going to write a helpful. I'm going to write a fine note. note. Uh, where's a head? Fine, this, this is, is close. Oh, there's a lot of curses here. I am. <laughs> I am curse word. <laughs> I'm a hero. I feel like that doesn't uh, convey what... Here is a good guy. That's helpful. So okay. see, look. This man will be your friend, and it's great. You just gotta crush <laughs> these boxes. He's... I love him. Hey. That was a bold leap. He's not, is he a good guy? He's a, he's a friend. He's He wants me to help uh, clear out these... Oh, <laughs> so you're you're actually doing a good... You're being nice. Yeah. You're doing a goof. No, I'm not doing a goof. That would be, that'd be, that'd be mean. That'd be a foul note. This is a no-goof stream. That is true. We tried our hardest to. Part of getting good means being good, and you got to help your friends and be nice. <laughs> that is bolt. a lightning That bolt. is a useful spell. It's honestly like this. This feels like a cheat code. Like I and I, <laughs> I'm sure somebody's like, what a what a loser. But like I don't know. I want to get to the part where I can grind and upgrade my swords and stuff, and you know. Um, Damien Griffin on YouTube says, "How long is the campaign in Demon Souls?" This is a tough question because I mean I feel like this could take you. 50 hours uh, if you're insanely good at video games like Mitchell Saltzman he basically sp speed ran this game which is crazy yeah he he said I think it took him like nine or ten hours on his first try but he also has beaten this game five or six times yeah, so. yeah he knows it like the back of his hand. exactly so, you know yeah. if you're if you're incredibly well versed with the original then it probably will take you less time than the average person. yeah our uh, our friends over at push square who uh, do tons of PlayStation coverage have said that it takes about 25 hours to do basically the critical path, maybe 30 if you do the side missions, but 40 to 50 if you want the platinum. So again, that this is a this is a big, a big giant beefy launch game. Like, and that's assuming is, that you're good at games. Yes. Yeah. If you're bad, this could take you the rest of your life. Probably double that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's I, funny whenever we get like a dev telling us how long a game is like in interviews, often you kind of cut a couple hours off of that. I feel like with Soulsborne, you add on if you're not as experienced with them. For sure. Oh, absolutely. Ah, good Lord. The nerve of these guys. Stop it. <laughs> ah, come on. Okay. I'm not going in there anymore. I don't like it in there. All right. The I devs. like how these guys like scream. They really sound like they're in pain. Right. <laughs> you know. I, well, it's I was gonna that, say. Sorry. Go ahead, Max. It's got that FromSoft gurgle, like when just right. Just, Whoa! <laughs> like it's just the most guttural. Like move over, visceral. <laughs> Here comes guttural. 
I did a pre-launch interview with the creative director for it, and he said they recorded, I think, thousands of new sounds to be able to put in the game uh, to really enhance the the gurgling oh, that yeah. you're going to get you can, throughout you it. You can tell. Yeah. See, you can even play it like a shooter. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Hey. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, can I shoot? I don't think can I can I get him through him. the window. Nope. Yeah, can't absolutely. Shoot him. Oh. oh no. The hardest boss of all windows. Are there... Do we want to jump into a different game? Yeah, let's do it. We have just a few minutes left on the stream. Uh, this was Demon Souls Remastered. I think we should jump into Astro's Playroom. Um, and uh, you can kind of walk us through some of the dual sense features, which we won't be able to feel at home. But if you are watching, when Max describes something, hit yourself, you know, or smack <laughs> your leg or something like that. Clap, you know. Hold um, hold your phone in your hand and ask a bunch of people to text you and call you, and that will recreate the, <laughs> that's the right. haptic sensation. That's right. Can I can I just say, if you do have a brand new PS5, please don't sleep on Astros. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's bundled into the console, and you could immediately assume that it's kind of non-essential. But it is such a joy to play, and and more than that, it really teaches you what your PS5 can do, at least from from the the dual sense uh, perspective. Yeah. And it's it's amazing. It's also just a total homage to PlayStation history. So if you are a PlayStation fan and have been you know had systems from the past, this is a a, a wonderful like nostalgia trip. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love it. Yeah, I went into this thinking. I think like the previous Astro games, they like the first one what was it asked the the one that came with the camera or was yeah, sort of included the playroom. That felt very. I don't know. That felt like kind of just like pack in software, and then Astrobot. The, the VR Rescue one was very much like, that felt like a new mascot platformer. Right. This feels like a game about PlayStation, which is yeah. kind of interesting. I don't have Bugs Next downloaded, unfortunately. I would love to show that off. So kind of like the PSVR, uh, this game starts with you launching out of the controller, which is really cool. Now, Max, like, tell us what you're feeling right now when you're so running you can, around. It's kind of hard to separate it because, like, I, obviously we're, we're kind of mashing all the audio together. But there's like little, there's like little rope, like robot feet on glass noises coming out of my controller, and every time he takes a footstep, it's like it's <laughs> alternating between sides of the controller. Yeah. So you get, I, and that's sorry, why, hold on. There's a there's a large PlayStation One back there. Yeah. So that's um. This is this is probably my favorite part here. Um, the PlayStation Lob Labo, which I guess means it's 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 really really impressive with headphones on. Like there's a lot going on here. <laughs> um, but basically, you, you collect coins and you unlock all these sort of puzzle pieces and um, pieces of of PlayStation history, which I love because it includes even really boring stuff like the PSVR processor. Yeah, the, the breakout. <laughs> it's um, great. Who could forget? What is it? Where where did I put it? It's over here somewhere. I think I got like the PSP camera, and I'm like, oh, they're really going for this. The there. Like, oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. the boy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So joyfully though, oh. like every like when you get one of those little peripherals or accessories, it's is like, that, look, you have got a Vita that, card. I That's the PSP away. microphone. Oh, so they they do basically like uh, wacky package parodies of yeah original stuff, but um, with Astrobot mixed. The in. whole game is also like filled with Easter eggs of like classic PlayStation and sort of PlayStation adjacent games. Um, you'll catch. I don't want to spoil it because it's legitimately like some of the most charming stuff I've I've seen in this game. Um, but you'll see like the Astrobots recreating scenes from PlayStation games. So that this is so I actually got really into the Astrobot uh, mission on uh, or PSVR the the launch software that came with that um, because it had one of these capsule toy machines where you could basically collect figurines and toys and look at and spin them around and look at them in VR. Um, so I don't. You're up. I don't know if you can see this. This is the the what is it? Active triggers, but how are you controlling this right now? I want to see your... This is me pushing the the right trigger or left trigger. And um, is there motion control? No, but there's there's actually there is a little bit of motion control. So I'm wiggling. That's oh okay. Doing yeah, that, but then there's the like tension. actual resistance there, and then yeah. 
you pull it and then it's it like I don't know it's 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 a gimmick but it's a really cool one yeah, yeah. Oh! like I wonder <laughs> then, how many devs are actually gonna use the whole breadth of right. what the dual sense can do every part of the deer I hope I hope I hope a lot of them do um, I actually so. I haven't I haven't read a ton about like which you know third party games are utilizing this at launch um, if any. But. I think everyone's doing it a little bit. Like Godfall, each uh, weapon's attacks feel different in the triggers. I know Call of Duty is supposed to be doing some stuff with like each gun feels different in the triggers. Right. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, 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 I'm with you guys. I really hope this is something that sticks and then people uh, put together. I really like that they're building this mural out here. This feels like something they would do, you know, at like uh, the what at PSX. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be honest. This game is like the closest thing we're probably gonna get this year to, like a, a PS5 launch, like a big event where everyone's excited and they're playing crazy music and there's like lights and stuff everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. it's like being at a really cool E3 without <laughs> yeah. all the people there. Yeah, I think to echo Lucy, like d definitely do not sleep on this because it's free and it's there when you you boot up your PS5. It's a fun platformer in its own right. It's a a great showcase for the dual sense and it's, it is like everyone's been saying just joyful there's mm -hmm. just so much happiness to it i do want to give a special shout out to all the notifications i'm getting on my phone today that aren't the amazon delivery guy <laughs> thank you for giving me just yeah, like same right you just get like a yeah. mild like hyped excitement you get really you know and then you look down and you're like oh there's a there's something at Whole Foods is on sale. That's great. Yeah, my, my, my girlfriend just texted me and I was like, is the, is the PlayStation downstairs? But it, she was like, what do you want from Safeway? <laughs> A PS5! <laughs> so yeah, I haven't, I haven't played this level, but this is here. This should give you an idea of what... What is that? Oh, it's Gravity Rush. So it's this. Um, really we have a piece that just went live on the site. Uh, Simon Cardi from the UK put together 64 PlayStation game references that he found in Astro's Playroom. Damn, if awesome. you check that piece out and notice any more, please leave it in the comments. Um, James Donaldson on YouTube says, uh, "Does a game installed from the disc take up the same amount of space as one that's downloaded?" That's a good question. Are you? Do you guys have any discs right now? No discs. Not right PS5 now. discs, no. I actually got the I got the all digital version of the console. Mm -hmm. One because I I'm, I don't know we're in a pandemic and I don't really think we're going to be trading discs for a while. But two, it doesn't have the beer gut, you know. And I feel like something in my life shouldn't. <laughs> I prefer to call it the hernia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the oh, pouch. Oh. <laughs> Just about a minute and a half left in our PS5 day one launch stream celebration festival fiesta uh, presented by Hulu. Hulu has live sports, which uh, you can download the Hulu app right now on pretty much any device you own, but specifically you got a PS5 and can get it there too. Thank you to our friends at Hulu for presenting this, by the way, and putting the gang together. Um, it's you know it's, it's always a good excuse to hang out with you guys and yeah. talk PlayStation 5. We are playing uh, Astro's Playroom right now. I get these names confused a little bit. Uh, and this is just a giant celebration of all things PlayStation. Uh, as, as we mentioned, IGN has an article up about all the different PlayStation references on uh, hidden in this game. This is a sort of uh, you know, it celebrates all the history of PlayStation, all the devices and consoles oh. they put out. Um, and to everybody who's been watching on the live stream so far, thank you so much. We hope you're excited for the PlayStation 5. Uh, we're, we hope you're excited for uh, all the coverage we'll be doing. Um, if you're still on the fence, keep in mind IGN is reviewing tons of PS5 games and has been for a while now. We'll be covering everything throughout the launch, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because you know, invariably things do break. Uh, and uh, if you want even more, every single week, on IGN and your favorite podcast streaming platforms and YouTube as well. Uh, you can watch or listen to Podcast Beyond, which is our weekly PlayStation show where myself, Max Goville, Lucy O'Brien, Jonathan Dormush, and several others get together to talk PlayStation all the time. I got a... No, that's not it. Damn it! I thought it was my <laughs> PS5! Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Max, Lucy, Jonathan, uh, Astrobot, Thank you everyone for being here today. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, all of our friends. And then even, uh, what, what'd you call her in, in Demon's Souls? Terry? <laughs> oh yeah, Totsy. 
Tati. <laughs> All our friends that we made today, uh, and to everybody in the YouTube chat and Twitch, uh, thank you for joining us. And to our friends at Hulu, thank you for uh, presenting this stream. Go check out the Hulu app on PS5. And from all of us here at IGN, uh, congratulations to PlayStation for the PS5 launch and to all the gamers out there. Keep celebrating and have a great time playing video games no matter where you play them. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.